What's up Chaos Shinobi here? Summary, neglected by his family, Naruto finds hope in a new life now with the skills of the past he will rebuild what has been forgotten. Ice Release Naruto, Strong Naruto, Chapter 1 Walking in the dark woods of the feared forest of death was a young boy with bright blonde hair and ice blue eyes wearing a pair of tattered black shorts, ruined red shirt and a pair of worn out shoes. No most would find it odd to see a young boy barely six years old to walk in a place with such a name but this boy was different. This boy went by many names Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze to those who knew nothing of his family life, just Naruto to the few that did, but they mostly used the name Demon the Scorn of the Village. Why is this village filled with such idiots? I mean come on this is the sixth time this week that those dumbasses chased me into here and for what to get revenge bunch of morons Naruto yelled in frustration at the sheer idiocy of the villagers. Walking further and further into the forest Naruto sees his one safe haven in the entire village a large cave to most it would be strange to call a cave a safe haven but to Naruto, it was like paradise since no one knew about it but him. Walking inside the large cave Naruto walked until he reached a large open area with a few things that he used to train like a couple of practice dummies and some stray kunai and shuriken and a few scrolls here and there. It's good to be back here, sometimes I wonder why I ever go back to that village Naruto muttered to himself before shaking his head getting rid of the thought not the time to think of any of that today's the day I explore some more of this cave who knows I might find something of worth. Oh you have no idea. Grabbing a flashlight and some rope Naruto heads towards further into the cave. After hours of exploring Naruto was starting to get frustrated rocks, rocks and look more rocks Kemi why can't I find anything in this stupid cave? Venting his frustration Naruto kept kicking a wall until he hears two different sounds. Crack. Bam. Fuck I think I just broke my foot cried Naruto holding his injured foot whilst looking at the now broken wall and hate stupid wall hurting my foot like that why I oughta wait a wall finally I found something yada. Forgetting about his injured foot Naruto starts walking down the new path I swear if I find nothing but more rock I'm going to flip Naruto whispered to himself. Walking for what felt like hours was actually 10 minutes but he is 6 and has short legs, Naruto found something he didn't expect to find right in front of him were two massive metal doors covered in rust with a large circle in the middle with a faded image of a dragon's head. What the hell is something like this doing in a cave walking closer to get a better look at the doors Naruto became curious as to what could be on the other side of the doors. So he placed both of his hands on the door using all the strength his six-year-old boy had to try and open the doors but they didn't budge at all stupid doors won't budge walking away from the door in sadness that it wouldn't open Naruto turns on his heel and runs at the door hoping the added speed would help him, only to trip and go face first into the door causing his head to bleed which splattered on the door as he fell on his back. As the drip down the door, the blood stopped moving and began flowing upwards to the center of the door making it glow before stopping. Still dazed from his trip to the floor Naruto held his head in pain. Using the door to hold himself up Naruto wiped blood from his head with his free hand still not noticing the door glow slightly until it flew open sending Naruto to the floor once again pissing him off. Okay I have had it with this fucking cave first my foot, then my head and now I'm being made to eat the dirt by a door a fucking door. Ranted Naruto but stopped when he looked at the room he fell into with wide eyes. The room looked ancient and was covered in ice from the floor to the walls. The only wall still viable through the ice had faces carved into it reminding him of the Hokage mountain. The most shocking part was a large blue orb floating in the center of the room surrounded by pillars of ice and stone. What is something like this doing here? Naruto asked aloud. Walking closer to the orb being careful so not to slip on the icy floor Naruto got a clearer look at the orb and saw a shadow floating in the middle of the mysterious orb. Wanting to find out what it was he carefully edged closer to it but almost fell when a voice boomed around the room. So someone with the blood of the past has finally found this place though I didn't think it would be one so young. Why are you here boy? boomed the voice scaring Naruto. I found this cave years ago when my family locked me out of the house and the villagers chased me into the forest of death and I have been coming back ever since this is the only safe place I know of answered Naruto scared he had trespassed and was about to die for it. Why would your family lock you out and for what reason would these villagers chase you? The voice asked in a slightly gentler voice. My family don't care about me my father thinks I'm a waste of space that isn't worthy of breathing and my mother doesn't even look at me Naruto had tears gather in his eyes think about it but the worst is my sister Mito she knows that they don't love me and rubs it in my face every chance she gets wiping the tears away Naruto continues as for the villagers they see me as a demon. Because my father sealed the chakra of the QB into my sister and the soul into me finished Naruto with anger in his voice. These people foolish to think such things about you I can sense you potential to become a strong fighter and even Thesis old eyes can see you are no demon Naruto wasn't sure but he swore he heard the anger in the voice's voice. Child do you wish to prove them wrong? Show them the power you hold within you? Not expecting the voice to ask anything Naruto could only say one thing. Hmm. You say something? Somewhere in Konoha. Achoo why do I suddenly feel a sense of pride? 
asked a white-haired man before shrugging and went back to reading an orange book Igolo Hitomi you naughty girl the poor bastard never noticed the group of Kunoichi behind him, back with Naruto I said would you like to prove everyone wrong about you? asked the voice again a little irritated at what Naruto said. A shocked look appeared on Naruto's face but was soon replaced by one of confusion um no offense Mr. Voice but how can you teach me your voice? asked Naruto was not understanding how a voice could teach him how to be a strong badass fighter. Ha 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 I suppose that this is my fault for not introducing myself face to face look at the orb child and you will see how looking over to the blue orb Naruto was shocked to see the shadow start to move and walk out of the orb revealing an old man with long gray hair and chilling blue eyes with a scar going from his eyebrow to the bottom of his eye. My name is Kwai Liang or better known as Sub-Zero but starting from now you will be calling me Master stated Kwai with a smirk on his face at seeing the look of awe on Naruto's face. After announcing Naruto as his student Kwai expected many things like a small bow or a cheer of excitement he was not however prepared for the bombardment of questions the little blonde kept asking him. What will I be learning? A small tick mark appeared on Kwai's head. Will I be able to blow stuff up? The tick mark got bigger. How did you get that scar? Kwai's balled his fist. Will I learn cool fighting styles left eye beginning to twitch in irritation? Will I shut up? Shouted Kwai in irritation at the constant questions. Seeing that he pissed off his new teacher already, Naruto bowed sorry sensei it won't happen again promised Naruto getting a nod for Kwai see that it doesn't but since you are so eager to learn I will tell you what this place is. Millennia ago there were many worlds but two were in a constant war they were this world known as Earth Realm and the other was known as Outworld to stop this war the Elder Gods created a competition that pitted the best warriors from both worlds against each other in mortal combat. Earth Realm won but the leader of Outworld Shao Kahn attacked anyway. We won but it cost us greatly as punishment the Elder Gods destroyed him. Looking to Naruto to see if he was still paying attention he was happy to see the amount of attention Naruto was paying to his story. It was later discovered that Shoa Khan had been manipulated into attacking Earth Realm by a sorcerer called Quan Chi to lower the Earth's defenses making it easier for Shinaka former Elder God to invade Earth Realm. Fortunately, he was was stopped by Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade who trapped him inside an amulet where he was kept a prisoner for 25 years but was released by his followers. After his release, he tried to gain the power of the Jinsei which is the life force of Earth but was stopped by Cassie Cage the daughter of Johnny and Sonya. After Shinnok was defeated and Earth safe once again I returned to the Lin Kuei Temple as the years went by and the world began to change my people began to die out with only me left standing I asked Raiden to allow me to stay here in the Jinsei and wait for a person worthy of my teachings and that is you young Naruto you will be my legacy to this world Kwai looked over to see Naruto shed silent tears. What is wrong my student? Asked Kwai not sure why Naruto would start crying at his words. I I it's just that you're the first person to actually acknowledge me stuttered Naruto wiping away his tears of joy. Smiling at his student Kwai ruffles his hair when I am done teaching you Naruto everyone one will know exactly who they have wronged. Smiling at his teacher Naruto starts bouncing on the balls of his feet so sensei what are we going to do first? Asked Naruto barely containing his excitement. First you are going to write a letter to your family and I will place it in your bedroom for them to find and after well let's just say you're going to going to be rather busy for the next 10 years ha 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 laughed quite scaring Naruto about what plans his sensei had for him. Sitting in front of a piece of paper and pen in hand Naruto wasn't sure what to say in the letter but then thought of all the things that they have said to him over the years. I wish you weren't my brother. You're such a disappointment. Why can't you be more like your sister? Filled with a newfound rage Naruto began to write his letter to his ex-family. Done already I see well pass it here and I will deliver it said Kwai. Passing the letter to his teacher Naruto had a thought pop in his head um sensei will I be learning how to use chakra at all during my training? Asked Naruto making Kwai think for a moment. I will gather material for you to learn from later during your training since I want you totally focused on my training since you did not know of the powers people had in this era. Okay, Sensei, when the time comes I would like some stuff on elements and ceiling, would be great and maybe some scrolls on Genjutsu listed Naruto making Kwai nod before letting himself fall backwards and disappear into the ice floor leaving a starry eyed Naruto behind. I am so leaning that muttered Naruto in awe. Outside the Namikaze house. It's been a while since I have done that said Kwai breathing slightly heavier than normal. Regaining his Kwai looks around for the best place to break in from but sees weird black marking along most of the walls and window that for some reason sent off his warning senses. Looking around the house once more. Kwai sees one small window that has no markings on and decides that would be his entry point. Climbing to the window with relative ease even at his age Kwai silently opens the window to the room and finds himself inside a small plain bedroom with white walls and bed must be Naruto's room glad he found the room so easily Kwai places the letter on the bed so it is easy to see and was about to leave again when he heard people talking on the overside of the door. Outside Naruto's room. Are you sure this will work me Naruto-kun? 
asked a beautiful redhead with worry in her voice looking at the blonde Hokage. Trust me Kushina-chan this seal will work fine once I place it on Naruto all his chakra will be absorbed into it leaving only the minimum to live then we place the seal on Mito and give it to her said Minato making Kushina frown. But this seems wrong I know I said I didn't want my baby to have to fight for a living but to steal his chakra is too much said Kushina making Minato sigh in annoyance. It is for the good of Konoha said Minato making Kushina's eyes glaze over and nod in agreement. See you agree but I want to make sure the seal key I mean works properly first so I'll leave it for later walking away from the door Minato headed towards his office leaving Kushina to stand there with glazed eyes and a single tear rolling down her face. With Kwai. Well shit just hit the fan better get back to Naruto but I mustn't tell him about this yet it could get him killed said Kwai before falling backwards and disappearing into the now frozen floor. At the Jinsei, appearing from the frozen floor, Kwai looks to see Naruto asleep atop of a small rock, staring at his student's sleeping form but remembers there is still things to do before they can start his training. Naruto wake up ordered Kwai hearing his teacher's voice Naruto opens his eyelids morning sensei are we going to train now? Asked a sleepy but excited Naruto. Gaining a serious look on his face Kwai folds his arms over his chest Naruto before we begin your training you need to do one more thing stated Kwai confusing Naruto about what he would have to do. Um, sure sensei I'll do whatever it takes to become stronger promise Naruto. Very well before we begin your training you need to become a cryomancer so you can use ice as I do. To do this I will place my blood in you this should allow you to become a cryomancer looking at his sensei with no small amount of worry um sensei you said should what else could happen to me? Asked Naruto making Kwai sigh. You could freeze from the inside out stated Kwai making Naruto go why I died at the risk he was about to take. Thinking over the pros and cons for a few minutes Naruto had his answer let's do this sensei. Naruto shouted surprising Kwai with his bravery. Not being one to be told twice Kwai creates a syringe out of ice and takes his blood and injects it into Naruto. Ha I don't feel any different maybe I need mo ha 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 Naruto began to scream as he felt the blood in his veins freeze. He continued to scream until ice started to cover his body hiding it from view. Having nothing to do but wait and worry Kwai sits down and meditates praying for his new student to survive. After an hour of waiting for the ice surrounding Naruto cracked making his body fall to the floor but didn't shatter like Kwai had feared it would. Walking over to his unconscious student Kwai noticed some differences his once blonde hair had turned white with hints of icy blue, his once tan complexion turned pale. Sleep, for now my student because when you wake you are going to go through hell. Opening his eyes, Naruto found himself laying face first on a solid block of ice but strangely felt no cold or even a chill from it, groggily getting up from the ice block Naruto felt a dull pain go through his aching body. Damn my body feels like I got hit by a train from snow country whined Naruto before looking around the room Naruto sees his sensei meditating in the corner. Walking over to greet his teacher Naruto catches his reflection in a wall of ice. What the hell happened to me? exclaimed Naruto looking at the unfamiliar face that was his reflection. His once sun blonde hair had turned to snow white with ice blue highlights, his tan replaced by a pale skin, but the strangest change was his eyes his once shining blue eyes had changed to a cold ice blue that would make most freeze with just a glimpse at him. I see you have noticed your changes, I must say you look more like a Lin Kwai recruit now getting a look that demanded answers Kwai motions for him to sit. The reason for your new appearance is because your body had to change to become a cryomancer this came with some added bonuses like greater strength and speed, higher pain tolerance and a greater healing factor and trust me that last two will help during your training Bwahaha said Kwai ending with a small evil laugh sending a shiver down Naruto's spine. Now that is out of the way we can talk about your training Kwai could see Naruto's eye light up at the mention of training to start with you will learn the basics of Dragon Kung Fu until I deem you ready to learn any of its advanced techniques, whilst learning that I will teach you how to control ice and how to use it like a weapon. These lessons will continue until I say then you will move on to the advanced things by this point Naruto was jumping on the balls of his feet in excitement. Will I get to learn that badass ice teleport? Hope evident in his voice. It is called the tombstone teleport and yes in time you will learn and hopefully, improve it since it is far too predictable in most combat situations with those words of fire light in naruto's eyes i promise sensei i will improve it and any other technique i learned he promised causing his sensei to smirk that is quite the promise naruto and one i hope you fulfill but back to our earlier talk your training begins today so prepare yourself because after we start there is no turning back and with that he walked towards the training ground leaving his student there to think for a few moments finally the start of my new life away from this village and my ex-family and with that Naruto ran after his teacher to start his training. Namikaze Mansion Kushina Uzumaki was sitting at home reading a book but felt a sudden pain go through her heart ah why does my heart hurt? 
Why do I feel like I just lost something important? She muttered to herself holding her chest in pain. Still holding her chest in pain Kushina walks into the kitchen and sees Mito eating a sandwich. Hello Mito Chan said Kushina still holding her chest something Mito noticed. Are you okay Kachan? Seeing that her daughter was worried she put on her false smile I'm okay Mito Chan just feeling a bit under the weather seeing no reason not to believe her mother Mito goes back to eating her sandwich. Watching her daughter eat her lunch Kushina started to think about her family Minato was normally busy with his duties as Hokage and if he wasn't he would be teaching Mito or working on his seals. Then there she Mito was a loud and energetic girl reminding her a lot of herself at her age especially with her red hair and finally Naruto the black sheep one of the family that being one of the nicer names she had heard Minato calling him. Naruto was a mystery and saying he was distant would be putting it mildly not that she blamed him for some reason no one seemed to care for him regrettably not even her. Mito have you seen your brother? Asked Kushina making Mito look like she had just been slapped. Why would I know where that waste of space is? Asked Mito shocking Kushina. Don't talk about your brother like that, yelled Kushina making Mito look at her like she was crazy. Why not it's the truth he is useless and should do everyone a favor and disop slap holding her red cheek Mito looked up to see her mother look at her in anger something that scared her. Don't ever say that ever do you understand, yelled Kushina getting a nod from Mito Kushina bends down and wipes away her daughter's tears now we are both going to Naruto's room to see him and you are going to say sorry understand? Getting a nod the two head upstairs and stand outside Naruto's room. Um. Ka-chan I can't remember ever going into Naruto's room before said Mito making Kushina think about the last time she went to kiss Naruto goodnight or read him a bedtime story and she couldn't remember because she had never done it. Knocking at the door a couple of times and getting no response the two silently opened the door and frozen at what they saw. Naruto's bedroom was as plain as a prison cell a single bed a small desk in the corner and grey walls without a single poster hell not even a drawing. Looking around the room for something to tell them where Naruto had gone to Kushina sees a small slip of paper sitting on the bed. Feeling her heart beat quick and Kushina walks over to the note and starts to read. Dear ex family, instead of writing about all of the horrible things I have had to go through like the beating from the villagers and the neglect from you I choose to only write three words to you. Goodbye forever. Finish reading the note Kushina drops the note and breaks down sobbing on her knees so followed by Mito who picks up the fallen note and so joins her mother crying on the floor. This is my fault I wanted him to go cried Mito as she held the note to her chest. No Mito-chan don't blame yourself blame me, Minato in this village wept Kushina. Staying in Naruto's room for hours crying over the loss of Naruto the two redheads heard the front door close. Kushina-chan, Mito-chan I'm home called Minato from downstairs. Hearing their husband slash father's voice the two rushed downstairs and hugged the life out of him surprising him. Calm down you two and tell me what's the matter said Minato trying to comfort the two. It's Naruto he's gone cried Kushina tightening her hold on Minato making him wince. I'm sure he will be back soon from wherever he is said Minato who was panicking on the inside shit did the little runt die in the forest for the first time in his life Minato wished Naruto wouldn't be dead. No, he won't he ran away he. Left a note said Kushina passing the note to Minato who read it quickly his anger rising with each word he read. Shit this ruins my plan for the seal muttered Minato was not expecting Kushina or Mito to hear it. Unfortunately, for him, he forgot that Kushina being an ex Jinjuriki and Mito being the current one their senses are more advanced than normal humans so they heard his whisper like it was a shout. Controlling their anger at Minato the two redheads release Minato from the hug and watch his emotions flash across his face from anger to annoyance. Kushina the ink on the snow looks a day old at best I need to gather the Anbu to go and track him down and with that Minato was gone in a yellow flash leaving two angry redheads. Kachan I get the feeling that Tosan hates Naruto Nisa said Mito with a confused look on her face not understanding how her Tosan could hate her brother. So do I Mito and I plan to find out why said Kushina as she walked towards Minato's study followed closely by Mito. Reaching Minato office Kushina notices the alarm seals on the door Mito run and get me a brush, some ink and paper running to get the supplies Mito returns shortly after holding everything Kushina asked for. Quickly rewriting the seals on the door to the study, Kushina followed by Mito start walking in and towards the desk but stops in the middle of the room as a sudden sharp pain appears at the back of both their neck. Ignoring the pain Kushina and Mito keep walking over to Minato's desk and sees a folder named. Project Chakra. Opening the folder Kushina reads details of the project. Project Chakra created by Minato Namikaze and Donzo Shimura and assisted by Orochimaru. This project was created for the purpose of creating the ultimate weapons for Konoha. Entry 1. I have had Orochimaru experiment on the use of bloodlines for the weapons. So far only one has survived and has gained the ability of Makuten which is a step in the right direction hopefully soon Konoha will have an army of bloodline users at its beck and call. Entry 5 We have concluded that bloodlines though powerful are very hard to integrate into the human body as it is just rejected resulting in the human death. 
so instead we have needed to use something far more powerful and easier to integrate with humans, the answer is simple Jinchuriki. Entry 14. By orders of Donzo, I have rescued Kushina from the Kumo Ninja resulting in her falling for me increasing the plans for the Jinchuriki army. Entry 20. I have been stealing the chakra from the Jinchuriki for months now to test on to see the best ways to use it. Orochimaru has come up with several possibilities so far but nothing major at the moment. Entry 28. I have impregnated the Jinchuriki this could be the breakthrough we have been waiting for whilst giving birth the seal will weaken giving us the chance to reseal the beast inside the child from there we can train it to become Konoha's weapon. Entry 29. It was all going so well but my plans have failed the Jinchuriki had twin something I didn't foresee coming this resulted in both children getting bits of the Kyuubi's chakra in them normally this would be a plus to have two children with tailed beast chakra but it isn't the chakra that should have gone to one was split weakening our weapon this won't do. Entry 44. I have designed a seal that should take all of the beast's chakra and absorb it now all I need to do is wait for the right moment to use it. For the second time that day Kushina cried in sorrow. Seeing her mother start crying once again Mito picks the dropped folder and reads it herself, not a minute later joins her mother crying in pain and of them notice the seal on the back of the folder start to glow. Calming herself down Kushina looks at her crying daughter Mito chan go and pack your things we aren't staying her with that monster a second longer getting a nod from Mito the two wipe their eyes and ran to their rooms to pack. Quickly packing their things Kushina and Mito walk out of the Namikaze door never to return. With Minato 10 minutes earlier, sitting in the Hokage office was Minato who had just sent off a squad of Anbu to track down his wayward son. I know you're there you can come out sensei said Minato smiling slightly as he saw a sensei step out of the shadows. I see your time as Hokage hasn't dulled your senses like my old rival Haruzen praised Donzo with a slight smirk looking at his best student. Taking a seat across from Minato Donzo gained a serious look is it true that your son has left the village? Don't call that thing my son, but yes it is true he has run away but I have sent a squad of Anbu to retrieve him answered Minato causing Donzo to sigh in annoyance and frustration. I will never understand your hate for your son, but never mind that I will send out two squads of root Anbu to help with the search, have you finished the seal? Asked Donzo getting a nod from Minato. Good if he is found by my root Anbu then I will have him taken to one of the underground bases for safekeeping until we can proceed with the plan. Agreed send me a message shit the alarm on Project Chakra just went off I have to go disappearing in a yellow flash leaving a worried Donzo. Namikaze Manor. Appearing in outside his home Minato sprints inside his office only to see it empty with the Project Chakra folder on the ground and covered with tear stains. In this situation, Minato could only say one thing. Shit. With Kushina and Mito. Kachan where are we going to go now? Asked Mito. Since I am still a registered Kunoichi we can't leave the village so we will be staying with my friend Mikado. Yay. I haven't seen Auntie Miko in ages exclaimed Mito excited she could see her favorite Auntie after so long. Walking down the dark streets of Konoha drawing weird looks from passers-by who wondered why the Hokage's wife and child would be walking this late at night with suitcases. Ignoring the looks they were getting the two redheads made it to the Uchiha compound and knocked on the clan head's home. As the door opened Kushina and Mito smiled seeing Sayuri standing there hey Sayuri-chan remember me? Said Kushina confusing Sayuri. Hey. Kachan there are two tomato heads at the door yelled Sayuri not seeing the two red heads eyes twitch in annoyance at being called a tomato. Hearing her daughter shout Mikoto walked to the door to greet her longtime friend Hey Kushina what are you doing here at this time? Did you get into a fight with Minato? Asked Mikoto. Can we put these two to bed then I will explain getting a nod the two kunoikis took the girls into Sayuri's room to sleep. Walking back into the sitting room Mikoto looks at Kushina with a serious look ok Kushina what happened? With that Kushina started to explain what had happened and what she had discovered. By the end of the story Mikoto was livid that bastard. Yelled Mikoto. So is it ok to stay here for a bit just until I buy an apartment for me and Mito? Of course, it's ok for you to stay and you can forget an apartment you can have one of the houses here in the compound. Thank you but I don't think Fugaku will like that very much said Kushina causing Mikoto to laugh. Don't worry about him he won't do a thing trust me seeing the sweet smile on Mikoto's face Kushina just nodded. Good now it's time for you to get some sleep you have had a long and stressful day agree with her friend the two headed off to sleep. As Kushina tried to fall asleep she couldn't take her mind off of Naruto and how badly she had failed him. I'm sorry Naruto wherever you are I hope you're happy whispered Kushina before falling to sleep. Jinsei 5 years later Naruto age 11. It was an early morning in the village of Konoha but down deep below a young Lin Kuei student was practicing with his sensei. Very good Naruto you have almost mastered the dragon style all you need is more experience using it praised Kuei looking at his now 11 year old apprentice. It's all thanks to you sensei replied Naruto with a bow. The past 5 years of training had been great for Naruto. He had changed a lot over the years he had grown to a nice 5 FD6. His hair was still the same color but it had grown into a shaggy look with some bangs covering his eyes, Ichigo Dangai, 
and his face had become more angular with the loss of his baby fat. Basically, he looked like a young Minato but with blue and white hair, paler skin. Since his old clothes not longer fit Naruto now wore a pair of black steel toed combat boots with black combat trousers with a nice blue belt with the Lin Kuei symbol on it, for his upper body he wore a tight sleeveless black shirt showing off his defined muscle, over this a nice blue short sleeve trench coat and as tradition he wore the Lin Kuei mask, true but without your natural skill and your determination it would have taken much longer to teach you. But enough of that let you see your progress and your ice manipulation show me your weapons of choice. Following his sensei's command. Naruto holds his hands out and forms two commas made of pure ice with jagged edges. After forming the commas, he starts going through his kata for them called the Dragon's Talons, finishing his kata he releases his weapons making them shatter on the ground. Good very good now show me your other weapon ordered Kaui. Bowing to his sensei Naruto holds his hands together and forms a Muramasa katana that was a bit longer than normal. Going through his kata for his sword called the Dragon's Fang. Finishing his kata Naruto drops the weapon shattering it and turns to bow at his now clapping sensei. Very impressive to learn two of the Lin Kuei's most difficult weapon styles is no easy feat. Yet you my student have done it and I couldn't be prouder said Kwai with pride evident in his voice. Thank you sensei will that be all for today. Yes I know about you progress in the Lin Kuei eyes style moves but before I can teach you further you most do something. Give me your order sensei and I swear on my honor it will be done. Don't be too hasty me student you should hear the mission before accepting. But since you are so eager your mission is to kill every bandit at a small camp located east of here I believe it is near a small country called the Land of Waves finished Kwai looking at the shocked face of his student. But sensei I've never killed before said Naruto looking to the ground I don't think I can kill in cold blood he muttered sounding sad that he would disappoint his teacher. Looking at his student Kwai couldn't help but think this is what his father must have had to do when training him and his brother. Naruto you are ready for this I know you are. I agree killing in cold blood is wrong but killing to protect those weaker than you is something that I believe in and I hope you learn too as well said Kwai looking as Naruto kept his head down think on his words. Naruto thought of his sensei's words over and over again in his head no one ever looked out for me so maybe if I look out for those weaker than me I can stop people having to go through the same things I did with that thought in mind Naruto looked up to his sensei with fire in his eyes. If I can help people like you helped me then I will even if I have to kill exclaimed Naruto with determination. Good go and gather all that you think you require then we shall both go so I can watch you fight said Kwai making Naruto run of and gather his supplies. I hope I'm making the right choice, but with the world like it is then the kids in school must be doing something similar, Kwai said to himself not knowing how wrong he was. Uchiha compound. Mito you are going to be late to the academy if you don't get up shouted Kushina. The past five years have been kind to Kushina she still looked like she was in her 20s even if she was nearly 40. Coming Ka-chan shouted Mito from upstairs. Mito had grown to become a clone of her mother in the past five years but still had some of her father's features like her blue eyes and some blonde highlights in her long red hair. Shouting goodbye to her mother Mito runs towards the compound gates only to see Sayuri standing there with an annoyed look on her face. And what took you so long? Asked Sayuri with a you better have a good explanation look causing Mito to sweat a little at her friend's stare. Um you see on the walk here I saw this old lady who had dropped her shopping and being the good citizen I am I decided to help her but it turns out she was an enemy ninja and she took my wallet, so I had to track her down and fight for it which took a while lied Mito not noticing the tick mark on Sayuri's head get bigger and bigger with each passing second. That's bullshit exclaimed Sayuri Kami you need to stop talking to Kakashi San you're starting to act like him next thing you now you'll be reading those orange books said Sayuri with a small smirk at seeing Mito's face go pale at the very thought. That will never happen not now not ever. Denied Mito Kami knows what her mother would do to her if she started reading those books. Anyway, we are going to be late if we don't hurry up said Sayuri who started walking away, leaving Mito behind. Hey wait up, shouted Mito as she ran after her best friend. Academy. Arriving with a minute to spare Mito and Sayuri take their seats next to Hinata. Morning Hinata-chan greeted Mito with a smile whilst Sayuri gave a small nod. Morning Mito-chan. Sayuri-chan, are you both ready to practice the henjutsu today? Asked Hinata. You bet I am I finally have it down to two hand seals boasted Mito with a grin on her face only for it to falter when she saw the two deadpan looks her friends were giving her. It has taken you this long to get that far even Shikamaru can do it with one hand seal and he is the laziest bastard I know said Sayuri making Mito depressed. It's not my fault I have massive chakra reserves and very little control muttered Mito making her friends snicker at her. Still depressed about her lack of progress Mito takes her seat just as their sensei Iruka walks in. Good morning class, today we will be going over our henjutsu so form a line and get ready to perform it as the class lined up Mito slowly walked down the stairs before taking her place in the line why do I have to do this I would rather be doing something cool thought Mito. With Naruto and Kwai, above in the trees overlooking the bandit camp, 
Kwai looks over to his nerve student. Naruto from now on this is your mission so make your plan said Kwai making Naruto close his eyes and open his senses. There are 26 bandits 14 are asleep and 1 ninja, but the level of chakra I'm sensing is barely over Chunin. Four civilian women and a child that I sense are afraid but unharmed said Naruto holding in his anger at mentioning the civilians. Your sensing skills have improved, now that you have this information use it to your advantage and eliminate the threat said Kwai getting a nod from Naruto as he jumped from the tree and into the camp. Landing behind one of the larger tents Naruto sneaks inside to find two passed out bandits, stealing his nerves Naruto creates to kunai out of ice and slits their throats killing them silently. Fighting the urge to puke Naruto heads out of the tent and hides in the shadows of another tent and repeats the process until only the bandits that are awake and the ninja is left. Leaving the shadows of the tents, Naruto sneaks behind the guards of the prisoners and jams a kunai each into their temples killing them instantly. Walking over to the terrified prisoners Naruto puts a finger over his mask face where his mouth would be telling them to be silent. I'm here to help I'm going to untie you but I need you to stay here until I have finished clearing out the rest of the bandits, okay? Seeing them nod Naruto creates a kunai and cuts the ropes that bound them. Okay stay silent I'll be back about to walk out Naruto felt a small tug on his shirt and sees the only child of the group holding it yes? Asked Naruto. Can you please save my kachan the man with a headband took her, said the small boy with tears in his eyes. Nodding his head Naruto headed straight towards the biggest tent in the camp most likely belonging to the only ninja of the group. Reaching the tent in record time whilst taking care of the renaming bandits. Naruto lifted a corner of it and snuck inside but what he saw made him see red with rage. The unknown ninja was ripping the clothes off of the poor women whilst smiling. Creating his ice katana Naruto walks out into the open and glares at the man stop you animal you won't harm her any longer said Naruto making the man turn around to look at him, release the women at the same time. Hey who are you Gaki, and what are you doing here? Demanded the man with a sneer. I'm here to save the captives. As for who I am that's simple I'm your executioner said Naruto as he charged with his ice katana. Smirking at Naruto the man brought out a kunai and blocked the strike haha that a good one Gaki my executioner I, well you better know my name then it's Kaimuta Toshi x Chunin of Kiri said the now named Toshi. Sending a kick to Naruto's chest who dodged it easily. Hmm your katana is made of ice you're one of those bloodline freaks that the Mizukage is trying to kill. Maybe if I deliver your corpse he will let me return throwing his kunai at Naruto Toshi began making hand seals water chains jutsu shout Toshi sending multiple chains of water at Naruto not seeing the smirk on his opponent's face due to the mask he wore. I'm the worst opponent you could have picked and this is why ice ball yelled Naruto sending a ball of ice towards Toshi who didn't bother dodging and used his chains to stop it from hitting him but went wide eyed as the ball froze his chains and shattering them carried on hitting his chest freezing him instantly. Seeing his enemy frozen but alive Naruto walked over to the ice statue and sliced it in two making both parts shatter he deserved worse said Naruto. Looking over to the ex-captive who was covering herself with her hands, Naruto sees the fear in her eyes and chooses to keep his distance trying to make her more comfortable. Miss you're safe now. Your son is waiting for you with the other villagers said Naruto. With those words Naruto saw the fear in her eyes be replaced by relief. Thank Kami Inari is safe. What about the rest are they all okay? Asked the women. They are fine a bit shaken up but fine, if it is okay with you I will escort you to them and be on my way said Naruto seeing the women nod walks over to the women and passes her the sheet from the bed allowing her to cover her body. Thank you for saving us, my name is Tsunami what can I call you? Asked the now named Tsunami. Naruto my name is Naruto. Walking in silence to the other ex-prisoners, Tsunami was suddenly pounced on by a crying Inari. Kachan you're back you're really back. Please don't leave again cried Inari as he clung to Tsunami who smiled at her son and began calming him down. Not seeing a reason for him to stay Naruto began his walk towards the camp gate but was stopped by the sounds of shouts and footsteps. Naruto wait, shouted Tsunami as she and the others ran towards him. Yes? Asked asked a confused Naruto to sure what else they wanted from him. Thank for saving us, how can we repay you? Asked Tsunami. Um. I don't want anything said Naruto as he began walking away again leaving a shocked group expecting him to want something for saving them. Kwai's location. Arriving at the meeting point, Naruto sees his sensei sitting on a rock waiting for him. I see you have finished a quite quickly, well done from now on your training becomes harsher are you ready? Asked Kwai. Yes, sensei, said Naruto with a bow. Good from now we won't return to the Jinsei chamber I want you to get used to this world so we shall travel and train. I have already prepared everything for your training so our first stop will be snow country for you to learn more advanced ice manipulation and maybe create some new techniques. Nodding to his sensei, the two traveled back towards the boat they used to get to wave and set up for snow country. High in the mountains of snow country was a tombstone with a statue made of solid eyes shaped like the Lin Kuei symbol. 
Sitting in front of the tombstone was Naruto who had changed from a young boy to a warrior. Standing at an impressive 5 feet 11 Naruto had lost what remained of his baby fat leaving him with a chiseled and handsome face. The only imperfection he had was a thin scar that went from the top of his eyebrow to the top of his cheek. Over the years, his clothes hadn't changed much he still wore black combat and trousers along with a tight black shirt. Over this, he wore his ice blue trench coat but with the added hood and the sleeves ripped off. To complete his outfit he wore the traditional Lin Kuei mask. It has been a year since you died master, I know you said it was because you were away from the Jinsei but I can't help but think your death is my fault if I hadn't found you then you would still be alive muttered Naruto looking at the words that were chiseled into the stone. Here lies Kuai Liang, master of the Lin Kuei, teacher, father figure. I wish you could be here to see me re-establish the Lin Kuei but I can take solace in knowing you're watching over me standing up and giving a quick bow Naruto started walking away from the grave and heading down the mountain and towards the small village at the bottom named Tsukoshi Yuki Little Snow. As Naruto got closer to the small town he pulled up his hood hiding his face from view no wanting to be recognized by anyone that might be looking for him. Walking through the village and towards the gate, Naruto drew curious looks from the people of the town since it was rare anyone to travel to the small village. Ignoring the looks he was getting Naruto kept a normal pace and continued towards the village gates but when he arrived he was greeted by 30 samurais. Sub-Zero Sama please come back to the capital the daimyo would like to see you said samurai in charge of the mission. Ignoring the samurai Naruto keeps on walking out the gate but suddenly had to dodge a wave of chakra. Turning to where the wave came from Naruto sees all of the samurai holding their swords. I'm sorry, Sub-Zero Sama but the daimyo has ordered us to bring you in and that is what we shall do, shouted the leader of the samurai as he and the others charged at the annoyed Naruto. Not wanting to waste his time fighting them Naruto folds his arms and falls backward disappearing into the ice. Damn it he got away again. Who is going to tell Koi Yuki Haim that we didn't catch him cause I told her last time said the now scared samurai leader, causing everyone to point towards the newest samurai off the group he can do it shouted the group, causing the villagers watching to sweat drop at seeing a powerful samurai crying in fear at what their daimyo will do to him. With Naruto having escaped his pursuers, Naruto headed towards the coast, to take his ship towards the land of waves to restock and then the land of water where he would track down his target. Over the last year. Naruto had made a name for himself across the element nations by becoming a bounty hunter under the name Sub-Zero in honor of his master. But with reputation comes notoriety as after he defeated an A-rank missing nin he was placed in the bingo books as an A-rank ronin a ninja without an affiliation to a hidden village. Fortunately for Naruto they had next to no information about him other than his cover name and a picture of him with his hood up. Other than bounty hunting Naruto did the occasional mission if the pay was good enough. One of his best clients was Iwa since it was low on Shinobi for the last great war and another was Kiri with their low numbers after the civil war they offered many jobs to him something he was thankful for. That and he found Kurosuchi and Meikyut didn't hurt. Reaching the coast Naruto climbs aboard his small sailing boat and heads towards Wave for the first time in five years. Konoha same time. In the past five years, Konoha had changed with many things happening but one of the most devastating was the Uchiha massacre. Nearly every Uchiha apart from the children. A few civilians and Mikado had been killed by Emiko Uchiha daughter of Mikado and Donbu captain now S rank missing nin. Team 7 which consisted of Kakashi Hitake, Mito Uzumaki, Sayuri Uchiha and Kiba Inuzuka were ready to blow a gasket from the amount of D rank missions they had to do namely catching the devil cat Torai. Over the last 5 years, Mito had grown from a young girl to young woman that looked and acted identically to her mother long red hair porcelain white skin and a beautiful face and figure that made me drool. Sayuri had become a carbon copy of her mother Mikado something that men in Konoha were grateful for she had long black slash blue hair, soft white skin and a beautiful face and body. Kiba looked like a typically Nuzuka wild spiky brown hair, red fangs on both cheeks and a coat with fur around the collar. Right no team 7 stood in front of Minato Namikaze the Yondame Hokage and ex-husband to Kushina Uzumaki. Mission accomplished Sensei said Kakashi was not looking up from his book much to Minato's annoyance. Very well would you like another mission? We have many D rank ones to complete asked Minato. Seeing his student ready to shout Kakashi spoke first actually Sensei I think they are ready for a C rank mission said Kakashi using his patented eye smile. Very well Kakashi. Send in Tazana ordered Minato and without a second delay Ananbu walked in with an old man wearing a straw hat and drink from a jug. I'm the super bridge builder Tazana and I wanted super protection. How are these kids going to protect me? The redhead one looks like a tomato. The gloomy girl looks like she'll cut herself more than the enemy and the kid has a dog what's that gonna do piss on the bandits at the end of Tazana's rant the three Janons had to be held back from beating the man black and blue by Kakashi and the Anbu. Don't worry sir I'm an experienced Jonin I can handle a couple of bandits said Kakashi still holding Mito and Sayuri back from beating the old man. After discussing the time. 
they would meet at the gate Team 7 went to their homes to prepare for the mission Uzumaki home Getting to her home Mita runs into the kitchen to see her mother wearing her Jonin uniform and her hair in a ponytail Kachan I finally got a C-rank mission No, I can help you look for Nichan exclaimed Mito happily as she hugged her mother Over the past 11 years, Kushina had been looking for signs of Naruto on every mission she took she had even asked Jiraiya to help her look but with no success. A day didn't go by when Kushina didn't cry at the loss of her son not that she had the right to call him that. That's great Mito-chan, what's the mission? Asked Kushina hoping it was nothing too dangerous for her daughter. Just guarding some drunk bridge builder that lives in Wave, I wanted to guard a prince but no instead I get an old drunk, exclaimed Mito making Kushina chuckle at her daughter. After talking to her mother, a bit longer Mito packs her equipment and heads out the door not seeing the worried look that was on Kushina's face. Konoha Gate So Emo when is your teacher and that tomato girl getting here? Asked Hazana either not noticing or plain not caring at the glare Sayuri was giving him. Kakashi Sensei is normally late and I wouldn't be surprised if Mito stopped off for ramen on the way here said Sayuri not sensing the person behind her. That hurts you know Sayuri Chan do you think that badly of your sensei? Asked Kakashi making Sayuri jump in fright. Glaring at her laughing sensei and teammate Sayuri tried to get her breathing back under control. Five minutes later Mito came running along with a smile on her face but dropped it when she saw the pissed off look on her teammates faces. I'm sorry I'm late my Kachan had to talk to me about something important said Mito making her teammates face palm and Kakashi to chuckle Mito Chan you still have noodles round your mouth said Kakashi causing Mito's face to match her hair in embarrassment. Quickly wiping the noodles from her face Mito gets into formation around Taz and they begin their journey to Wave. Walking down the dirt path towards Wave Kiba got bored of the silence and decided to ask Tazuna some questions. Hey, Tazuna-san doesn't Wave have its own ninja? Asked Kiba getting Tazuna to shack his head as no. Nope we have a few samurai but that's it, because of that we have lots of trouble with bandits, people being taken or just killed because they felt like it. I almost lost my daughter five years ago because of the bandit problem answered Tazuna still terrified of that fact he could have lost his daughter. Um. Tazuna san you said almost how did your daughter escape? Asked a no curious Sayuri, with Mito, Kiba Kakashi who was secretly listening by pretending to read his book. I don't know all the details, but Tsunami my daughter and her son Inari along with some other women were taken to a large bandit camp, but not even an hour after they were taken the group walked back into the village speaking about a boy answered Tazuna making them all curious as to who this boy was. So old man who was the boy your daughter was talking about? Asked Mito making a tick mark form on his forehead. She said she never got his name, but she said he had white and blue hair with white pale skin with a chiseled face and as she put it the bluest eyes that you could look into forever answered Tazuna a little annoyed at how his daughter described the boy. He and the two other males missed the small tinge of pink on Sayuri and Mito's faces. As they continued to walk they passed to puddles of water something that Kakashi noticed shouldn't be there. But a second too late as men jumped out of them with chains that tangled Kakashi shredding him to bits, terrifying the Janan. Tazna, one down, said one of the ninjas. Four left to go said the other as they both charged the scared Janan. Snapping out of her fear Mita pulls out a kunai and blocks the metal claw that was aimed for her head but never saw the second coming and shut her eyes but hears a familiar voice fireball jutsu shouted Sayuri sending a massive ball of fire towards the ninja making them curse as they were forced to dodge. Hmm better than I thought you would be but. You are no match for us shouted the two together as they threw their chains at Tazana but was stopped when three kunai lodged the chain into a tree. No more chains for you bastards, let's get um Akamaru Fang passing Fang yelled Kiba heading straight towards the two nin forcing them to dodge them all making them forget about the other two until they heard something familiar fireball jutsu shouted Sayuri taking them by surprise and hitting them dead on resulting in screams of pain from the two as their flesh burned killing them. All four watched as the two ninjas were burned alive in the fiery inferno not able to take their eyes away until the smell hit their noses making them puke on the spot. Still puking their guts up Kakashi walks out from behind a tree shocking them all. Sensei you're still alive, exclaimed Mito, Kiba, and Sayuri. Yep and I'm very proud of how you three performed today said Kakashi pleased with the way that his team fought against the two. But Sensei I killed someone muttered Sayuri with tears in her eyes. And I have killed hundreds it is a ninja's job to kill stated Kakashi trying to make her see why she had to do it. Nodding her head to her Sensei Sayuri walks away from her team to think about what had happened leaving Kakashi to ask Tazuna some questions. So Tazuna what is really happening at Wave? Asked Kakashi making Tazuna lower his head and tell them what is going on. After hearing Tazuna's sob story about Nami no Kunai, Team 7 decided to continue on with the mission to Wave. Walking down the road in silence, Mito decided to end the silence so Tazuna your daughter said a boy younger than us saved her, did she say how? Asked Mito wanting to know how a boy younger than her could kill so many bandits. Well she never went into detail, not that I can blame her. 
All she said was that he shattered the one that tried to harm her answered Tazana confusing them and himself as to how he shattered a man. Perhaps it's a new bloodline or even a personal jutsu suggested Kakashi thinking over the possible solution since in his time as a shinobi he had never heard of anyone being able to shatter someone before. As they continued their journey, they eventually reached the shore, where they looked for a boat to take them across the sea. After several people denying passage across the water, they finally found an old man willing to take them to Nami no Kunai. Unfortunately, they would be stuck on the small boat for hours. Mito, and, if they were honest, the other two couldn't take much more of it. This boat is driving me crazy, Mito finally yelled, getting nods of agreement from her teammates. Mito, stop yelling Kakashi looked up from his orange book we need to stay quiet, and your yelling can probably be heard a mile away, besides he will probably reach land soon. Kakashi was right, for out of the mist appeared a structure of stone, stretching most of the water. Is that the bridge? asked Kiba never seeing a bridge that large. Yep, Tazana replied, staring at his bridge with pride. We are almost there said Tazana making the three genins silently thank Kami since they were sick of being on the boat. He remainder of the trip was spent in silence, eventually, though, they reached the shore, where the man with the boat wished them well and left back across the water. Once again they had a fairly uneventful trip through the forest until suddenly Kakashi heard an odd whistling sound. Duck, yelled Kakashi, pushing Tazana to the ground, whilst a ridiculously large sword went over their heads and embedded itself into a tree. What the hell was that? yelled Mito from her position on the floor. She saw the large sword stuck in a tree above their heads oh. That could be Kirabushu, Kakashi said, looking at the sword embedded in the tree. That means, Momochi Zabuza. At your service, a man said, jumping onto the sword embedded in the tree before bowing sarcastically. He was pale, with short spiky black hair, and the lower half of his face was covered with bandages, he also wore a Kiri Hitai 8 sideways on his head, but instead of the normal symbol, his was scratched through marking him as a nuke nin. Momochi Zabuza, demon of the hidden mist, Kakashi said. I guessed so, given the demon brothers earlier. You're here for Tazuna, aren't you? Good guess, Sharingan no Kakashi, Zabuza replied. So, you going to hand him over the easy way? Guys, get back, Kakashi said. This guy's on a whole new level compared to the rest. Against him, even I'll admit it'll be a little tough, without this. After saying that, he pulled up his Hitai 8, revealing his other eye but, this one was red with a black three-tone design. Using your Sharingan already, I'm honored. Kasan said that Sensei had the Sharingan thought Sayuri but this is the first time I have ever seen him use it. Surround and protect Tazuna, said Kakashi to his team. Hurry up, I wanna kill the old man and get this over with, Zabuza said, but copycat, it seems I'll have to kill you first, Ni? Zabuza jumped over onto the water near them, standing on it. Suten, Kirigakur no Jutsu, Zabuza whispered disappearing in a rapidly thickening mist growing from the water. Damn, how'd he know? Kakashi said. The Sharingan can't see through this mist. Eight killing points said Zabuza from somewhere in the mist. Liver, lungs, kidney, brain, spine, clavicle vein, larynx, and heart. Which one should I choose? Ha, it's gonna take more than that to scare us, yelled Kiba. Oh, the Gaki has a pair, let's see what I can do about that suddenly. The air was filled with killing intent making Kiba and the others freeze in fear. What is this thought Kiba as he shook in fear? Beside him, Sayuri was nearly as affected. This is the killing intent of a Jonin. She, though, sensing the ever-growing key in the air. This is insane. I can't take this, I'd rather die now. Nearly against her will, her hand began raising a kunai to her neck. Beside her, Mito, who seemed relatively unaffected by the amount of key the two Jonin were emitting, saw her. What are you doing? She yelled shoving Sayuri's arm down. You're trying to kill yourself. I knew you were emo. Thanks, said Sayuri, eyeing her arm suspiciously. I don't know what I was doing. Don't worry Sayuri, Kakashi said. I won't let my comrades die. Oh? Zabuza said from the mist. We'll see about that. Suddenly, he appeared out of the mist, running towards Team 7 students, who were grouped around Tazna. With Kiba frozen in fear and Sayuri still slightly trying to fight off. Her own arm. Mito was left to try to defend them. She defensively grabbed a kunai, standing in front of Tezuna, and growled at Zabuza. Zabuza never made it, though. Instead, midway through, he was tackled by Kakashi. Nice try, said Kakashi but it'll take more than that to threaten my students and charge. Zabuza sprang up, pushing Kakashi off him. They both stood in front of each other, neither so much as twitching. Suddenly, Zabuza rushed towards Kakashi, but instead of directly attacking, jumped over him in a flip bringing the sword down on him in mid-air. To his surprise, 
Kakashi was unable to retaliate in time, resulting in Zabuza slicing him across the head. However, instead of blood rushing out, Kakashi simply dissolved into water. Mizubunshine, Zabuza thought, watching Kakashi dissolve into a puddle. But there's no way he could have copied my techniques in the mist. Oh, that was certainly impressive, Kakashi, Zabuza said. You had your clone distract me while you were actually hidden in the mist around me, observing. Oh, so you've figured it out, have you? Kakashi said, walking towards Zabuza. Too bad, I was going to use a great strategy against you, but obviously, you have everything figured out, don't you? Zabuza, instead of attacking Kakashi, simply ran into the forest. Sensei, I can smell he has several clones spread around to confuse you, but the real one is in front of you, yelled Kiba to Kakashi. Thanks, Kiba, Kakashi said. So, an Inuzuka, eh? The real Zabuza said, walking towards Kakashi. Should have known since he has a dog with him. Well, I guess I can't just clone spam you, can I? Nope, Kakashi answered, giving him a nice smile. Guess not. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, either way, does it? Zabuza said. Because I don't need clones to win this. With that, Zabuza disappeared in a burst of speed, reappearing behind Kakashi, who turned to deflect his sword with a kunai. They locked blades for a half second before Kakashi ducked beneath his aiming to thrust the kunai into Zabuza's stomach. Instead, Zabuza quickly brought his knee up to connect with Kakashi's head, before flipping back out of range. They both engaged in a standoff, circling each other, Kakashi holding his kunai, Zabuza with his sword. Suddenly, Zabuza again rushed towards Kakashi, who barely deflected the sword again, forcing it to pass millimeters above his head. He was unable, however, to block the sword coming back resulting in its passing through his body before once again dissolving into water. Damn it, Zabuza cursed, before listening for the copy ninja to attack. After a few seconds of waiting, he did indeed attack, jumping through the air to try to attack Zabuza from above. Zabuza brought his sword above his body, attempting to slice Kakashi as he came down above him, but Kakashi twisted violently to the side, angling his fall away from Zabuza. Once he reached the ground he brought his kunai down towards the back of Zabuza's neck before Zabuza twisted around to deflect Kakashi's hand with the back of his arm. Without waiting, Kakashi brought a kunai up with his other hand, which Zabuza was unable to avoid entirely, resulting in a long, but shallow, gash across the front of his chest. You'll pay for that, Scarecrow, Zabuza said, bringing the sword down towards Kakashi, who barely managed to duck underneath it to headbutt Zabuza in the chest. Zabuza was lifted bodily by the simple attack before flying back several feet. He returned to his feet just in time to deflect another kunai from Kakashi, bringing his sword up towards Kakashi's chest. Kakashi jumped above the swing of Kubi Karabushu, before bringing another kunai down towards Zabuza, who ducked away from Kakashi, bringing his sword up to prevent Kakashi from following. Zabuza once again moved towards Kakashi, holding his sword beside him as if to bring his sword up in a diagonal swing. Instead, he used his sword as a counterweight bringing his leg up to kick Kakashi in the side of the head, sending him flying. Kakashi landed in the water, swimming below to retreat before attacking again. Wrong move, Scarecrow, Zabuza said, walking over to the water. Suten, Suru no Jutsu, he said, bringing part of the water, and Kakashi, up into a sphere. No. I can't do anything from in here, Kakashi thought. Hey! Makes it a little tougher when you can't move, doesn't it? Zabuza taunted. Oh well, I'll take care of you later. Mizubunshine no Jutsu, he yelled, forming a clone to attack Team 7. You're not the only one who can make clones, Cage Bunshine no Jutsu, yelled Mito, forming 10 clones, which formed a line between Team 7 and Zabuza. The clones all growled aggressively at Zabuza, holding kunais in defensive positions. Hmm, the Zabuza clone said, looking at the clones. That's pretty neat, for a kid like you to be able to create shadow clones. You're something else, most Jonin couldn't create 10. But you're still going to lose, do you know why? No, Mito answered. I'm not going to lose. Yes you are, you're weak, Zabuza taunted. All of you, have been coddled, treated like kids, instead of the killers that you should be. What? Mito said. That's not true. Oh? Zabuza taunted. By the time I graduated, my hands were already stained with blood. And not only me, do you know how Shinobi and Karagakura graduated? No, Mito answered. But what does that have to do with anything? For any students to graduate in Kiri, Zabuza said. You had to fight another student of you class, to the death. That's sick, why would they do that? Yelled Mito. To make sure our shinobi are proper shinobi, that will kill without caring. But to kill your friends to become a ninja that awful. I never went through with it said Zabuza, making Kiba laugh in the background. Oh? 
said Kiba. But you're telling me you had your hands bloodied by the time you graduated. I did, Zabuza said. But instead of being put in a one-on-one -on -one fight, I opted to kill everybody. That's right. A class of more than 100 students, Kakashi said. And you killed them all, in a single day. That earned him the moniker Demon of the Hidden Mist. Not wanting to waste more time Zabuza's clone ran towards Mito's clone army but, before the clone made it, it was frozen along with Mito's shadow clones. A thick cold mist gathered around the water. My my I hoped my target would be easy to find but to find not only Zabuza but Kakashi of the Sharingan, my luck is better than normal, said a male voice from inside the mist. As the mist cleared a man standing there at an impressive 5 feet 11, who wore black combat and trousers along with a tight black shirt. Over this, he wore his ice blue trench coat with a hood up, along with a face mask. Zabuza Mamochi, the lovely Mizukage wants you back in Kiri, said the man, making Zabuza throne. Forgetting about Team 7. What does that lunatic want with me, he's still pissed that I tried to kill him. Said Zabuza discreetly sending his hidden friend in case things went south. Ah yes you don't know, there is a new Mizukage now since the rebels won the war, you know her I believe does Mei Terumi ring any bells. Seriously Mei is the Mizukage, I'm surprised that any men are still allowed in Kiri said Zabuza making the man chuckle. So will you and your friend come with me to Kiri I need to get my money for your collection? Asked the man. Hmm you must be important if Mei would entrust this job to you, so who are you? I go by the name Sub-Zero said the now named Sub-Zero with a small bow. Last time, seriously Mei is the Mizukage, I'm surprised that any men are still allowed in Kiri said Zabuza making the man chuckle. So will you and your friend come with me to Kiri I need to get my money for your collection? Asked the man. Hmm you must be important if Mei would entrust this job to you. So who are you? I go by the name Sub-Zero said the now named Sub-Zero with a small bow. There was silence until Kiba barked out a laugh ha ha ha. What kind of stupid name is that? Suddenly the water surrounding Sub-Zero froze and the air got colder sending shivers down everyone's spines. My name was given to me by my deceased master, who got it from his brother said Sub-Zero coldly glaring at Kiba making him whimper silently at how cold the glare was. Excuse my student Sub-Zero-san, he didn't mean to insult you, right Kiba? Asked Kakashi with a look that said apologize or else. Yeah, sorry Sub-Zero-san, said Kiba bowing slightly. The cold air disappeared good if you hadn't apologized I would have impaled you on a spear of ice said Sub-Zero, making the Genins and Tezuna turn pale and for Zabuza to grin in respect. Hmm I like your style kid, maybe one day you could get as infamous as me smirked Zabuza liking this kid already. Sorry Zabuza, but I'm already in the bingo book as an A-rank Ronin said Sub-Zero making the two Jonin Y died in the Genin's jaws to drop. That's bull you're about our age how can you already be that well known? Shouted Mito making, Sub-Zero actually look at the rest of Kakashi's team for the first time. Looking over, he saw the spitting image of his mother with some small differences. Not caring that his ex-sister was here, Sub-Zero looked over to the other member of the team and saw a raven-haired beauty, that reminded him of someone but couldn't quite place who. Just look in the bingo book. I was placed there after I got attacked by a couple of A-ranked ninja who thought that they could kill me, idiots all of them they barely put up a fight, all they were good for was a bit of money and even that was barely worth it said Sub-Zero making all but Zabuza think the same thing he's so cold. Ha ha ha, I like your style kid reminds me of well me laughed Zabuza liking this kid more and more. Why thank you Zabuza, but enough talking if you could signal your companion we will leave said Naruto making Zabuza sigh sorry kid but I can go back, not yet, at least. I need to finish this mission and if you help me the quicker we get to go back to Kiri. Kakashi froze at that there was no way he could take on two A-ranked ninjas and defend a Janan and the client. Cursing himself for not sending a summon for backup Kakashi wait to see the events unfold hoping that something whirled in their favor. Pretending to think it over for a moment Sub-Zero answered sorry Zabuza but I have a couple of people in Wave that are acquaintances of mine and it would be terrible of me to just let them die said Sub-Zero making Kakashi. Tazana and the Janans release a breath they didn't know they were holding. And here I was starting to like you brat, but it looks like I have to kill you along with the rest point his sword at Sub-Zero, who smirk loving to fight a strong opponent. But suddenly three Senbo needles flew out of the forest straight into Zabuza's neck, about to fall to the floor and person wearing a Kiri Hunter Nin mask appeared and slung Zabuza over their shoulder. Thank you I have been tracking him for a while. Don't waste your breath I know you're not a Hunter Nin you're working with Zabuza. I'm here to retrieve you guys remember said Sub-Zero making the Hunter Nin blush underneath the mask. Not that you could see it, without saying another word the fake Hunter Nin disappeared in a swirl of snow intriguing Sub-Zero greatly perhaps the Linkoi bloodline is not as dead as I once believed. So Sub-Zero san you will be he. Was as far as Kakashi got before fainting most. What did you do to Sensei? Yelled Mito. I have done nothing to Kakashi, 
He is suffering from a mild case chakra exhaustion explained Sub-Zero. DCH, why should we believe you? Mito tried to argue with a blushing face as she knew she had embarrassed herself. Believe what you want, but, for now, grab your sensei and we will head towards wave ordered Sub-Zero with a voice that said do what I say or I'll hurt you. Following his orders though reluctantly Mito creates a couple of shadow clones to carry Kakashi the rest of the way to Nami no Kuni. Nami no Kunai. After a long painful walk Team 7, Tazuna and Sub-Zero made it to Wave but, got some very strange looks walking to Tazuna's house since it's not every day you see a group of four identical teens carrying an unconscious man. Ignoring the looks they got, the group reached Tazuna's house and knocked Tsunami-chan I'm home shouted Tazuna the next thing the ninjas knew the door had been flung open and Tazuna pulled into a hug by someone Sub-Zero recognized. Kosan I'm so glad you're back, are you okay? Asked Tsunami frantically looking over her father to see if he was injured. Stop fussing over me I'm fine. Thanks to these is ninja here especially the two in the masks, said Tazuna, making Tsunami look over to the unconscious Kakashi giving him a worried look, turning to the other mask ninja she gasps recognizing the unique face mask. What's the matter Tsunami-chan? Asked her father as he saw his daughter start to cry as she looked at the hooded mask ninja. Is that really you? Getting a small nod Tsunami runs over and pulls him into a tight hug shocking everyone else. What the hell? exclaimed the Janan and Tazuna not knowing what was going on. Releasing him from the hug. Tsunami wiped her eyes I still can't believe you're here, Inari will be thrilled he's wanted to meet you again for ages now said Tsunami as she pulled Sub-Zero into the house, leaving the others dumbfounded at what had just happened. Deciding to follow the pair into the house they see Tsunami drag Sub-Zero towards the sofa and tell him to sit, which he did but, not before pulling his hood down showing everyone his wild white slash blue hair surprising everyone but Tsunami at the color. It's been a while huh Tsunami said Sub-Zero awkwardly not knowing what to say to her. Is that all you can say after you left the way you did Tsunami almost yelled annoyed that was all he said after years of not seeing one another. What do you want me to say, I meet you one night and haven't seen you since said Naruto, making Tsunami blush at the way that sounded. The three genins had to restrain Tazuna from trying to beat the shit out of Sub-Zero after what he'd just said. But you just left all I got was a quick goodbye, the others were disappointed to the three genins blushed at what they heard but for Tazana that was the boiling point charging into the room dragging three genins behind him he pointed at Sub-Zero with furry in his eyes what the hell did you do with my daughter, huh? Was all Sub-Zero could say not having a clue what the old man was talking about. you san it's nothing like that yelled a blushing tsunami. Bullshit, who do you two know each other? What are you secret lover? And what was that you said about the others does that mean he is more women other than you? What happened to my sweet innocent daughter wailed slash yelled Tazana making Tsunami blush reach atomic level. Shut up you san Screamed Tsunami instantly making Tazana stop and for Naruto to hold his ears in pain damned Tsunami I have heard you scream like that since last time I was here complained Sub-Zero holding his ears. I'll kill you, shouted Tazana only to be hit with a frying pan wielded by a Tsunami. That's enough Tosan. You have it completely wrong he is the one who saved me. Inari and the villagers five years ago. Tazana and the Janans who were still holding him back went wide-eyed not expecting Sub-Zero to be the person who saved Wave's villagers all those years ago. Wait you're saying that he was the kid that saved you? Asked Tazana still holding his injured head. Yes Tosan he's the one that saved me and the others from the bandits but, saved me from a worse fate. Without saying another word Tazana politely asked the Janans to let go of him which they did, he walked over to the confused Sub-Zero and bowed to him with tears in his eyes thank you. Thank you so much. No need to bow to me Tazana, I just did what any person would do, besides if you want to thank anyone you should thank my master since he is the one that sent me on that mission. Wiping his teary eyes then I would like to thank your master, where is he? Asked Tazana wanting to show his gratitude. Sorry, but like I said earlier my master is dead. Sorry, I just wanted to thank the man that helped save my daughter. It is not problem Tazana. Anyway Sub-Zero looks over to the four clones still holding Kakashi why are you still here go and put Kakashi down somewhere ordered Sub-Zero. I set up some rooms for you all earlier, follow me and I'll show you where you can but Kakashi san the clones followed Tsunami to the room leaving Tazuna, Sub-Zero and the genins who were looking at Sub-Zero with curiosity. Something that was annoying him greatly. Are you going to keep staring at me? Asked Sub-Zero making Sayuri talk for the first time since he had turned up. Who are you? I told you already my name is Sub-Zero. Yes but. Who are you, you're a rage yet you're so much stronger, you know Tsunami-san, you even know the Mizukage personally, so I'll ask again just who are you. Just pick up a bingo book most of my info is and there was the only answer he gave. We don't have a bingo book so just tell us, yelled Mito and Kiba, making everybody else hold their ears in pain. Dear Raiden that hurt, if you get your friends to shut up I'll lend you mine to look at said Sub-Zero making Sayuri readily agree. 
handing her his bingo book the three genins plus Taz and I open it to see many names crossed out in black hey what's with all the black line on people's names? Asked Kiba. They are all the people I have hunted and killed all four of them went wide eyed at the amount of names blacked out in the book. Forget that. For now, they flipped through the book until they found his page. Name, unknown. Title, sub-zero. Age, 15 to 18. Date of birth, unknown. Blood type, unknown. Height, 5 feet 11. Weight, 136 to 178 pounds. Rank, A. Affiliation, Ronin. Bounty hunter. Mercenary. Description, has white slash blue hair and has been seen wearing a blue trench coat with a hood, along with a blue face mask. Skills, 1 to 10. Ninjutsu, 9. Genjutsu, unknown. Taijutsu, 8. Kenjutsu colon 8. Funijutsu colon 9. Information. Not much is known about him but, he has never failed to bring in a target or complete a mission. He is friends with Anaki of both scales, Sundai Matsuchikage see page 55, Kurotsuchi of the Lave style see page 89, A the Yondame Reikage see page 72, Killer B see page 73, May Terumi the Godime Mizukage, see page 79. Is known to spar with A and Killer B. Bounties, Suna. 50,000 are dead or alive, Otto, 61,000 are dead or alive Ame, 42,000 are alive. Approach with extreme caution. After reading his page, all four were wide-eyed with unhinged jaws what the hell. Screamed the four making Sub-Zero who was sitting on the sofa talking to Tsunami turned to them. So did that answer your questions? Asked Sub-Zero using Kakashi's eye smile. It just raised more question, exclaimed Sayuri making Sub-Zero chuckle lightly. Yep turning back to Tsunami who had an amused but also confused expression on her face. What were they reading? Asked Tsunami wanting to know why the four were so shocked. It's a book that tells you information about dangerous ninja and they read my page answered Sub-Zero, making Tsunami want to read as well. Walking over to the still shocked four she picked up the dropped book and read it. A few minutes later a familiar sound hits Sub-Zero's ears what the hell. Getting annoyed with the constant shouting Sub-Zero goes upstairs to check on Kakashi leaving five shocked people behind. Entering the room Kakashi was put in, he finds the Jonin awake and reading his book is see you are awake Kakashi said Sub-Zero, making the Jonin close his book and look at him with his usual eye smile yep, but I'm still very low on chakra. DCH, you have grown weak Kakashi, your name used to be feared by most and now look at you, you would have died had I not shown up, not to mention got your demon client killed. Kakashi lowered his head in shame, knowing what he said was true. Anyway, you have a week at most before Zabuza comes back, so you had better prepare your team. Um, Sub-Zero-san could you teach my students please since I'm out of chakra? Asked Kakashi hoping to get more time to read his book. They are your students Kakashi, not mine. I plan only only teaching those I find worthy, not some random genins that have an incompetent teacher. I see your point Sub-Zero-san, but whilst I'm teaching my students, could you watch the bridge in case Gato decides to send his bandits there? That I can do and with that Sub-Zero left leaving Kakashi alone. This is going to be a long mission. Oh, how Kakashi wished he could control time, for others that power would be used to save lives or to rule the world but, for Kakashi he just wanted the power to win this Kami Forsaken week. Ever since his team and Sub-Zero arrived in Wave it has been one argument after another. From Tazuna screaming about Sub-Zero for corrupting his daughter to his students complaining to him about their training. But thankfully for Kakashi the mission was almost over, not that he had done much during this mission other than reading his book, leaving his students to prepare themselves and having Sub-Zero guard the bridge. Leaving him alone for what seemed like the first time in a week. Finally no more shouting, I thought I was going to go deaf a couple of times this week muttered Kakashi as he flipped a page in his book. Suddenly a cold breeze flew through the room sending a shiver down Kakashi's spine. Looking up from his book he sees Sub-Zero with a pissed of look in his eyes. Already guessing what this was about Kakashi put his book away with a disappointed sigh. What did they do this time? Asked Kakashi for what had to be the seventh time this week. For that last hour your three students have done nothing but annoy me with a bombardment of questions, ranging from my fighting styles to my hair color, so I have come to give you a warning, if your students don't leave me alone I will impale them all on spears of ice. Shouted a pissed of Sub-Zero making Kakashi pale knowing that he would go through with it. Nodding to the pissed of bounty hunter Kakashi sighs in relief as Sub-Zero leaving in a small breeze. Why do they have to piss off the guy that could kill them and probably me, said the Cyclops, before pulling out a familiar orange book. Giggle oh I'm a you naughty girl. Way bridge. Appearing in a swirl of ice, Sub-Zero sees Team 7 sitting down talking about something, 
not caring in the least he walks over to the builders and sits down ignoring the looks he was getting from the builders. Sitting in quite for the first time since he started this mission, Sub-Zero started to think about the current situation so I have a team consisting of my ex-sister, a new Chiha who hasn't unlocked her Sharingan and a boy who uses a puppy to fight, all being taught by the most incompetent teacher the Leaf Village could find. Great just great he was broke from his thoughts when he sensed the three genin standing in front of him. As I have just warned your sensei, if you ask me any more pointless questions then I will impale you all on spears of ice worn Sub-Zero making the three genin and builders who are listening pale at the threat. Actually we wanted to ask you something, said a slightly paler Mito still thinking about the threat. I don't care so leave me be replied Sub-Zero. This time it was Kiba who spoke please just hear us out. Fine hurry up and ask your question. Not needing to be told twice the three bowed please teach us. Asked the Janans. No replied Sub-Zero without missing a beat. What? Why? Yelled Mito and Kiba pissed that someone would reject them so quickly, whilst Sayuri remained calm since she expected that kind of response. I said no, I won't teach anyone but my children or people that join my clan replied Sub-Zero getting nods of understanding from Kiba and Sayuri, but Mito was different since she had no clan. I don't care about your clan or whatever, I just want you to teach me those cool techniques yelled Mito. You don't have what it take to join the Linquasated Sub-Zero, pissing Mito off. That's it I'm sick of your attitude towards us, so fight me and I'll prove to you that I have what it takes yelled Mito, making Sub-Zero chuckle darkly. Well then I challenge you to Mortal Kombat declared Sub-Zero, confusing all of the Janans. What the hell is Mortal Kombat? Asked Kiba. I'm glad you asked. Mortal Kombat was once the way that people solved disputes like the one we are having right now by fighting till one can no longer fight or death answered Sub-Zero making all that herd pale. Isn't that taking this too far? Asked Sayuri worried for her friend since her opponent was an A-rank ninja. Don't worry Sayuri-chan I'll kick his frozen ass out of bio, yelled Mito with fire in her eyes. Don't fool yourself girl, you can't beat me even if your team helped mock Sub-Zero, pissing the three genins off but enough to for now, we will fight later since unlike some I intend to do the job I was paid for and with that he closed his eyes and began to meditate, walking away but... Still pissed at the mercenary team 7 head towards the woods to help Mito practice for her upcoming fight. Annoying brats, but at least I get to see what she can do in a fight, thought Sub-Zero wanting to see how his ex-sister stacked up to him. Two days later, standing in a clearing was Sub-Zero dressed normally apart from his trench coat was missing, across from him stood Mito glaring at him, with Kakashi standing in the middle of the two. Okay as Sub-Zero-san put it this is a challenge of Mortal Kombat. Anything goes but please try to avoid killing blows getting nods from the two fighters he continues well then if everyone is ready. Fight. This isn't worth my time, said Sub-Zero standing in a lazy posture, reminding them all of Kakashi. Don't underestimate me you bastard. Sutan, water bullet jutsu. Screamed Mito sending a large bullet of water at Sub-Zero who just folded his arms and shook his head in disappointment is that all? I expected more unleashing an icy aura. Everyone watched as the water bullet froze in midair and dropped to the floor shattering. W what? Sidelines. What the hell just happened sensei? Yelled Kiba with Akamaru barking in agreement. I think that Sub-Zero has a bloodline, and a powerful one at that, said Kakashi with a serious look in his eye. A bloodline, you mean like Sayuri's family and those chains the Mito and her mom can use? Asked Kina getting an eye smile from his sensei. Yes Kiba but unlike the Uchiha clan I think that his bloodline involves ice. I've noticed that when he is emotional the air gets colder and when you insulted him the lake he stood on froze, that and he keeps threatening to impale us all on spears of ice finished Kakashi making Kiba and Sayuri face palm how did I not think of that? Back to the fight. What the hell was that? Shouted Mito scared that one of her best justice was stopped so easily. Was that it? What happened to kicking my frozen ass? Taunted Sub-Zero. I'm not done yet you bastard, shouted Mito, sprinting towards the unmoving Sub-Zero. She launched a high kick to his head barely moving he had Sub-Zero dodge the kick making her kick met air. Before she knew it she was launched into a tree thanks to a punch to her stomach. Is that really all the daughter of the great yellow flash can do? Can't even take a small punch if Anaki was here we would be laughing his ass off said Sub-Zero shaking his head in disappointment. Lying against the tree she was punched too. Mito was getting angrier and angrier with every passing moment. Mito's mindscape. Watching from the deep corners of her mind. Two larger and eyes looked at the current scene with amusement as it felt the pull on its chakra this is about to get more interesting. Back to the fight. Sub-Zero watched as Mito's body was engulfed in a cloak of menacing red chakra. Hmm using the fox's power already ah well the let's see if this will help you taunted Sub-Zero making the girl growl and charge at him in all fours and single chakra tail swishing behind her. Dodging a swipe Sub-Zero uppercuts Mito but this time she dodges and uses her tail to take another swipe at him. Quickly dodging the tail he jumps over Mito and goes through hand signs and places his hands on the ground ice release, 
frozen wasteland causing the entire cleaning including the trees to be covered in ice. I could end this fight right now but where is the fun in that? Show me what you can do daughter of the yellow flash taunted Sub-Zero, making Mito angrier. Standing up two legs Mito hunches over and says something that shocks him adamantine chains. Four chains of assault unleashing four glowing red chains from her back to a still shocked Sub-Zero was not expecting her to get her mother's bloodline. Too late to move the chains wrap around him making Mito smirk thinking she had won ha not so cocky now are you mock Mito. Sidelines. Hago Mito show that bastard, yelled Kiba whilst Sayuri stood there shocked that her best friend had just beaten an A-rank ninja. It's not over yet, said Kakashi making the two genins look at him in confusion. What are you talking about sensei? No one can escape those chains, not even the QB could said Sayuri not getting what her sensei meant. I'm not surprised you didn't notice I barely did, just watch and you'll see, said Kakashi making the other two turn back to watch the fight. Back to the fight. What got nothing to say taunted Mito still not getting a reply she tightened her chains hoping to get a response but instead Sub-Zero shattered into ice. W what? yelled Mito not getting how he escaped her chains. Hmm I never expected you would inherited those chains, said Sub-Zero as he walked out from the ice covered tree. How the hell did you get there? demanded Mito. Now why would I tell you that? He asked. Fine, I'll just beat the answers out of you Dada Bio, declared Mito. Let's see what you do about this ice release, Black Dragon Jutsu thrusting his arm forward a large ethyl dragon launched at the surprised Mito. Not having enough to time to dodge Mito infuses the rest of Kyuubi's chakra into her chains hoping to destroy the Jutsu, as the two Jutsus met Mito was forced back by the strength of it, but after a short struggle he chains prevailed and the dragon broke. You destroyed it. Congratulations but what will you do about the others? W what others? Said a panting Mito between breaths. These ice release, twin black dragon jutsu thrusting both arms two large black dragons were launched at the exhausted Mito. Not being able to dodge the oncoming attack Mito shut her eyes and prepared for pain. But none came opening her eyes she sees Sub-Zero standing in front of her holding the two dragons by the head stopping them from reaching her. Are you okay? Not having the strength to talk she gave him a weak nod. Good. Now I hope this solves the little dispute again another nod. Tensing his hands causing the two dragons to shatter Sub-Zero begins to walk towards Tazana's home, leaving behind two shocked genins an exhausted Mito and a worried Kakashi. To be able to beat an enraged Jinjuriki so easily, that man is very dangerous thought Kakashi before picking up Mito, but sees something on her shirt. Looking closer he sees a very intricate seal making him go wide-eyed as he remembered Sub-Zero's words. I could end this fight right now but where is the fun in that? Show me what you can do daughter of the yellow flash. Very dangerous indeed. Last time, to be able to beat an enraged Jinchuriki so easily, that man is very dangerous thought Kakashi before picking up Mito, but sees something on her shirt. Looking closer he sees a very intricate seal making him go wide-eyed as he remembered Sub-Zero's words. I could end this fight right now but where is the fun in that? Show me what you can do daughter of the yellow flash. Very dangerous indeed. End of the week. The long week was finally at its end and Kakashi and Sub-Zero were ready to shout Kami's praise for it. Ever since the fight with Sub-Zero Team 7 had changed Kiba would take his training more seriously, Sayuri would train for longer and harder, the strangest change was Mito she would behave like her normal brash self but when Sub-Zero was around she became quieter and would shy away from him. Now on the last day of the week, the bridge was nearly finished and Sub-Zero couldn't be happier since he just wanted to get this mission over with. Guarding Tazana as normal was Sub-Zero who was starting to get bored of this mission altogether. May better add a bonus for all the shit I have had to go through to get Zabuza thought Sub-Zero as he lay on the bridge watching the clouds float by. What felt like days later the men stopped their work for the day, so he walks back with Tazana to his house for dinner mentally hoping nothing weird happens during the meal. Oh you poor idiot wahaha, Tazana's house. Tsunami was happily cooking in the kitchen whilst her guests waited for Tazana and Sub-Zero to get back so they could eat. After the fight team, Seven had grown respect for the Ronin all in their own ways, Kiba respected his strength, Sayuri also respected his strength along with his cool attitude. I needed to make at least one ice pun. Mito, on the other hand, respected his compassion since he willingly saved her even when she insulted him. For her this made him someone to be respected, even Kakashi gained a newfound respect for the bounty hunter for his skill in nearly all the ninja aspects. He hasn't seen all of his skills, nor has he read the bingo book. So who do you think would win in a fight Kakashi Sensei or Sub-Zero? Asked Kiba, making the girls groan. That's the sixth time you've asked us that since the fight Kiba, and we told you we don't know, yelled Mito. PCH like I believe that I bet you think your boyfriend would win said Kiba making Mito blush. He's not my boyfriend. Screamed Mito blushing bright red. You so like him I saw the looks you were giving him after he saved your ass accused Kiba. I will admit Mito you have been acting strangely around him lately said Sayuri. I don't like that ice bastard, 
yelled Mito. I wouldn't call him a bastard if I were you said voice. Oh yeah, and what are you going to do about it said Mito turning to meet the voice, only to pale as she looked into the icy eyes of Sub-Zero. I'll impale you on a spear of ice warned Sub-Zero before taking a seat at the table, leaving a pale and embarrassed Mito. Six sitting in silence. Sub-Zero decides to ask Kakashi some questions. So Kakashi what have you been teaching your Jinan this past week? Asked the Ronin. Looking up from his book Kakashi looks over to Sub-Zero this and that nothing to special he answered making Sub-Zero smirk not telling me your team's skills in case I decide to turn. Very smart Kakashi. But like kids with a new toy the three Jinans couldn't wait to show off. We learn lots I learned a couple of Earth Jutsu along with tree walking shouted Kiba making Kakashi mentally facepalm since his plan was ruined. I have learned a fire and lighting jutsu along with the tree walking exercise said Sayuri. Hmm, I learned a wind and water jutsu along with the tree walking exercise said Mito not wanting to be left out. My that is impressive, congratulations you three especially you Sayuri fire and lighting are two of the hardest elements to learn praise Sub-Zero making a tinge of pink appear on Sayuri's cheeks and a frown to appear on Mito's. Before anyone could say anything Tsunami came into the room carrying dinner along with Inari who had his normal frown on his face. Sorry for the wait everyone placing the food on the table tsunami and everyone dug into the simple but very delicious meal. Why? Whispered Inari. Hey why what kid? Why do you bother you're all going to die? Screamed Inari surprising everyone at his outburst. Inari don't say such things, shouted tsunami. Why not it's true. No one can stand up to Gato and his army said Inari pissing off team 7. I'm not going to lose to some guy who hides behind a group of thugs, shouted Kiba. Yeah. My Kachan would kick my ass if I lost to some wannabe gangster you know, exclaimed Mito. Liars you'll all die they are too strong for you to defeat, yelled Inari, making Sub-Zero sigh. Inari I promise you that Gato will die said Sub-Zero making Inari look at him with tears in his eyes. BB but they're too strong, cried Inari. I'm pretty strong myself Inari remember I did save you and your mother all those years ago, so trust me this country will be saved and with his final words. Inari let lose his tears and hugged his mother who smiled at Sub-Zero in gratitude. The rest of the meal was spent in comfortable silence. Midnight. As everyone slept in their beds Sub-Zero was lying on the sofa thinking about the events that were likely to happen tomorrow, suddenly the sound of creaky floorboards got his attention, turning to the noise he sees a sight that made his jaw drop and almost made him pass out from blood loss. Standing there was Tsunami in a red see-through baby doll with matching panties showing off her gorgeous body. So Sub-Zero or can I call you Naruto now? Asked Tsunami with a wink making him nod his head dumbly, getting her to giggle. So Naruto-kun do you like what you see? She asked whilst doing a pose. Why yes very much getting another giggle from her. Walking with sway in her hips, Tsunami circles her arms around his neck good, think of this as more motivation for tomorrow and with that she kissed the stunned Ronin with passion and lust. Just as Naruto was about to return the kiss Tsunami pulled back with glazed eyes and a sly smirk that's just a taste so make sure you win turning away Tsunami walked back upstairs swaying her hips making sure that Naruto was watching her. Well, now I have a serious case of blue balls whispered Naruto as he lay back down and went to sleep dreaming about his reward. The next morning, after an awkward breakfast, thanks to the looks Tsunami was giving Naruto something everyone else missed. Team 7, Tazuna and Sub-Zero headed towards the bridge. Alright the bridge is almost finished all we need to do is check that everything is secure ordered Tazuna getting nods from his workers. After two hours of work, the builders deemed the bridge secure so they took off back home for lunch. Once every worker left an unnatural mist gathered on the bridge. Well your bridge is done to bad it won't matter spoke a voice that they all recognized. Come on out Zabuza you know this mist won't work so let's hurry this up since I still need to drag your sorry ass back to Kiri said Sub-Zero. Good point I wanna collect my money for the old man's head quickly, said Zabuza as the mist cleared revealing him and the fake hunter Nin. Haku you kill the three genins I'll take on copycat and snow cone here ordered Zabuza. Of course Zabuza-sama, said Haku before disappearing. Say goodbye to your students Kakashi taunted Zabuza. I trust my students they're stronger than when we last meet. You may have trained them for a week, but Haku is strong even stronger than me said Zabuza worrying Kakashi. I need to end this quick, thankfully Sub-Zero is here to help thought Kakashi as he sent Sub-Zero a look. Whatever Zabuza let's get this over with said Naruto covering his fists and eyes. Impatient one aren't you said Zabuza taking his sword from his back. We need to hurry Sub-Zero the others could be in danger said Kakashi as he lifted his headband revealing his Sharingan. Ice release, twin black dragon jutsu thrusting both arms forward two black dragons shot out of his arms and clashed creating an icy tornado shocking Zabuza crap water release, water wall jutsu shouted Zabuza as he created a large wall of water between him and the tornado only to go wide-eyed when the wall froze and shattered leaving him to the mercy of the tornado, 
Before Zabuza got pulled in he disappeared in a poof of smoke leaving a log to get frozen and shredded. I got to say I didn't expect that Haku does know any ice jutsu that destructive said Zabuza as he went through hand seals water release. Water dragon jutsu shouted Zabuza making a huge water dragon rise from the water below and charge at Sub-Zero who smirked full didn't you learn anything a minute ago Lin Kuei technique ice blast yelled Sub-Zero as he sent a ball of ice rocketing towards the dragon freezing it on contact. What the hell? exclaimed Zabuza shocked that a small ball of ice could freeze his mighty dragon so easily. Water jutsu are useless against me Zabuza, you better come up with something quick or it might be your head I deliver instead. PCH if swords won't work I'll kill you the old fashioned way said Zabuza as he takes his sword from his back and pointed at Sub-Zero by cutting you in two declared Zabuza. You forgot one thing Zabuza stated Sub-Zero. Oh and what's that? Me. Now guys summoning. Earth release tracking fang technique shouted Kakashi as eight dogs that differed in size burst out of the ground and bit down on different areas of Zabuza two on each leg one on each hand, another on his shoulder, one biting down on the Kubi Kiriocho. It's over Zabuza said Kakashi looking at the trapped Zabuza. Clap clap clap. Looks like the demon of the mist was nothing but a baby demon, said a short man with glasses surrounded by an army of bandits. PCH Gato what are you doing here? Demanded Zabuza. Do you really need to ask? I'm here to watch these guys do what you couldn't kill the bridge builder and destroy this bridge sneered Gato, you bastard. When I get out of this I'll cut your head off and shove it up your ass, shouted Zabuza making Gato laugh. Hi you can try I have an army and there is three of you sneered Gato, make that seven you midget, yelled Kiba as he, Mito, Sayuri and Haku who had minor injuries apart from Mito since hers had healed. 3-7 what's the difference when your enemy is an army yelled Gato now kill that old man and earn your pay, shouted Gato, kill the old man. Get the bastard. Kill them all. Mito, Kiba, Sayuri stay behind us and only kill those that get past. That's an order. Ordered Kakashi getting nods from the genins. Don't worry Kakashi I've got this said Sub-Zero as he calmly walked towards the charging army. Oi don't be an idiot get back in formation. Exclaimed Kiba but was ignored. Hey look this guy wants to be a hero shouted a bearded bandit. Hmm let's show him what happens to heroes shouted another. Hmm. I'm going to show you one of my most powerful techniques so watch closely Lin Kuei secret technique. Wandering the frozen wasteland, said Sub-Zero barely above a whisper as he placed both his hands on the ground unleashing ice that froze the ground the army ran on making them stop in fright but only to laugh. Ha! That was your ultimate technique laughed one bandit. Ha! That was so shit. What is it ca screamed the bandit as Sub-Zero appeared behind him with a sword made of ice sticking out of his stomach shocking everyone. Hmm. You all have one minute to live I suggest you use this time to piss yourself followed by praying to your insignificant god said Sub-Zero as his body sunk into the ice below. The next minute was nothing short of a massacre, limbs were lost, blood was spilled and lives were ended, and after a single minute, the army of 300 was nothing but corpses. W what the hell are you? Screamed Gato in fright as he looked at a blood-covered Sub-Zero who was standing in the middle of his fallen army. Me I'm your executioner said Sub-Zero who appeared a few feet in front of him ice blast shouted Sub-Zero launching a ball of ice at Gato's chest freeze and shattering it letting everyone see his spine and organs perfect I love this finisher walking towards the die Gato Sub-Zero grabbed his spine with two hands and used incredible strength and ripped the midget in two shocking team 7 and the brutality of the kill and making Zabuza smile with pride. Throwing the two halves of Gato over the bridge Sub-Zero walks towards the ninja noticing that the genins look pale while there ends the tyranny of Gato said Sub-Zero, kid you really are starting to remind me of a younger me, that was once of the most brutal kills I have ever seen, you would fit in well with the seven swordsmen praised Zabuza. Sub-Zero-san may I ask what that technique was it reminded me of my demonic mirroring eyes crystals? Asked Haku who had removed her mask showing everyone her beautiful face. I haven't seen your jutsu. But mine uses eyes to cover the floor or walls to appear instantaneously in the ice or I create answered Sub-Zero giving a brief version. That is so cool, shouted Kiba with stars in his eyes. I will admit that is a very dangerous technique, where did you learn it? Asked Kakashi quite shocked that a jutsu like his sense ice existed. Oh I invented it, said Sub-Zero like it was nothing special but shocked the others that someone so young could invent such a powerful jutsu. You must be some kind of genius, said Kiba with Akamaru barking in agreement. I wouldn't say genius, but I'm pretty smart. Anyway let's head back and tell everyone the news. Getting nods of agreement the ninja headed towards Taz in his house to tell him the good news. Later that night, after news of Gato's death spread the people all gathered at the town square and celebrated by throwing a big party. Kiba was trying to flirt with a bunch of village girls, Mito and Sayuri, Haku were trying to ignore all the boys trying to ask them to dance, Kakashi as normal was reading his book and giggling. Zabuza entered a drinking contest. Only two people couldn't be found one was Tsunami the daughter of Tazana the other was Sub-Zero the savior of Nami no Kuni. At Tazana's house. Are you sure about this Tsunami? 
asked Naruto between kisses. Yes I'm sure, so let's not waste any more time. Insert lemon here sorry I can't write lemons, if someone wants to write one go for it. The next morning, after a night of partying and other stuff, the ninja stood on the bridge ready to leave, but is stopped by Tazuna as he wanted to make an announcement. In honor of our savior, I believe that we should name the bridge he helped defend after him get shouts of approval Tazuna continued well then since there is no objection I name this bridge the Great Lin Kuei Bridge, shouted Tazuna making the people of Wave shout in joy. Thank you Tazuna said Sub-Zero with a bow only to be waved off by Tazuna it's us that should be thanking you countered Tazuna. Anyway. I need to get moving I'm already a week behind thanks to this idiot said Sub-Zero as he pointed at the annoyed Zabuza. Turning to walk away Sub-Zero was pulled back by Tsunami who pulled down his mask and gave him a passionate kiss, being careful to hide his face. This got many reactions from the group, a giggle from Kakashi, a thumbs up from Kiba, and weirdly two frowns from Mito and Sayuri, but the worst reaction was Tazna. I knew you corrupted my daughter you bastard. Yelled Tazuna only to get hit in the head by a frying pan shut up Tosan warned Tsunami still holding the frying pan, but stopped when Inari came over um Kachan does that make Sub-Zero my new Tosan? Asked Inari making her and Sub-Zero blush. That's complicated Inari we will talk about it later okay sweetie said Tsunami trying to fight down her blush, getting a nod from her son she turned back to the equally red Sub-Zero and Sub-Zero kun please do try to visit I still need to reward you, she said with a wink. Nodding he. Zabuza and Haku heads towards Kiri whilst the Leaf Ninja head towards Konoha. Last time, turning to walk away Sub-Zero was pulled back by Tsunami who pulled down his mask and gave him a passionate kiss, being careful to hide his face. This got many reactions from the group, a giggle from Kakashi, a thumbs up from Kiba, and weirdly two frowns from Mito and Sayuri, but the worst reaction was Tazna. I knew you corrupted my daughter you bastard. Yelled Tazuna only to get hit in the head by a frying pan shut up Tosan warned Tsunami still holding the frying pan, but stopped when Inari came over um Kachan does that make Sub-Zero my new Tosan? Asked Inari making her and Sub-Zero blush. That's complicated Inari we will talk about it later okay sweetie said Tsunami trying to fight down her blush, getting a nod from her son she turned to head back to the equally red Sub-Zero and Sub-Zero kun please do try to visit I still need to reward you, she said with a wink. Nodding he. Zabuza and Haku heads towards Kiri whilst the Leaf Ninja head towards Konoha. Now, after leaving Wave Country Sub-Zero, Zabuza and Haku set sail on a boat that Naruto had used to travel there. As the three sailed towards Kiri Sub-Zero sat on the deck wait to arrive until a feminine voice called out to him. Um, Sub-Zero-san can I talk to you? Asked Haku. What is it you need to discuss? Well I wanted to know how you can control ice, are you a part of the Yuki clan? Haku asked with hope in her eyes. I'm afraid I'm not part of the Yuki clan answered Sub-Zero destroying Haku's hope of finding any of her family. Oh, muttered Haku looking to the ground the hope gone in her eyes. But Haku's head shot up my clan is the originator of your clan so in a sense we are family albeit very very distantly finished Sub-Zero. Not a second later Haku launched herself at Sub-Zero with tears of joy in her eyes. After letting Haku cry for a minute, Sub-Zero pulls away and looks into Haku's red puffy eyes why are you crying Haku? Sub-Zero asked. I'm so happy that I finally have a family, said Haku not noticing Zabuza watching the two. Of course, you have family Haku seeing Haku's confused look he continued you have Zabuza. But I'm only Zabuza Sama's tool said Haku making a pained expression appear on his face. No Haku you're not said Zabuza stepping into view at first. I wanted to use you to help me defeat Yagura but before I knew it I started to see you as the daughter I never had but I had a reputation to uphold so I couldn't show it. Now that we are returning to Kiri I hope that we can start again if not I own Tao, yelled Zabuza as Haku threw herself at Zabuza hugging the life out of him. Seeing that he was no longer needed, Sub-Zero went inside to sleep. Kiri, sitting behind the Mizukage's desk was the newly instated Mizukage Meiterumi she is a tall slender woman with green eyes, and ankle-length auburn hair styled into a herringbone pattern at the back, a top knot tied with a dark blue band and four bangs at the front. Two bangs are short, with one covering her right eye and two are long crossing each other on her bust, are just below her chin. She wears a dark blue dress that falls just below her knees underneath she wears a mesh armor along with a white belt along with high-heeled sandals and shin guards reaching up over her knees. Stupid paperwork it's the curse of all kids just complained Mei as she worked through a massive pile of paperwork and when will Sub-Zero Kun get back with that Zabuza Baka, said Mei making her bodyguard out snort. I bet he won't find Zabuza and will just leave with the first half of the money. That man is a mercenary Mei-sama and shouldn't be trusted I know I won't ever trust the man said Ao was not trusting the masked mercenary since all mercenaries ever cared about his money and will do anything to get it. Won't find, man, ever Mei inwardly repeated over and over. Um, Mei-sama are you listening to me? Asked Ao. Ao shut up or I'll kill you, 
said Mei with a smile scaring out what did I say? Thought Tao, ignoring her scared bodyguard Mei went back to doing paperwork but was soon interrupted by a knock at the door. Enter, said Mei happy to get a distraction from her paperwork. As the door opened Mei's secretary came in with a slightly scared look on her face Mizukage sama you have three guests one is Zabuzama Mochi and the other is Sub-Zero Sant said the secretary making Mei's smile brighten show them and said Mei with joy in her voice. Of course Mizukage sama said the secretary with a bow before leaving the room to get them. As soon as the secretary left Mei jumped out of her seat and looked at her reflection in the window and started to reapply her makeup confusing Ao. Mei Sama what are you doing? Ao asked. Making sure I look good for Sub-Zero Kun what else she replied like it was obvious making Ao sweat drop of course how I should have known said Ao. After Mei made sure she was presentable she sat back down and waited for them to arrive. Not a minute later a knock was heard on the door. Come and said Mei in a seductive voice, making Ao sweat drop again. As the door opened Mei and Ao were greeted by the sight of Zabuzama Mochi getting scolded by a teenage girl and Sub-Zero chuckling at the pair. Missions accomplished Mizukage Sama said Sub-Zero professionally. No need for formalities Sub-Zero Kun Mei or Mei Chan is fine said Mei getting a sweat drop from Ao and Zabuzama. A glare from Haku and an eye smile from Sub-Zero. Very well Mei Chan, said Sub-Zero getting a smile from Mei and scowl from Haku. Oh and take that mask of you look so much better without it, said Mei but pouted when he shook his head. Please. Sub-Zero Kun I want to see your handsome face said Mei. You never know Mei Chan I could be ugly said Sub-Zero making her bout. Please Sub-Zero Kun I want to see it looking over to Haku Mei sees the hope in her eyes and smiles and I'm sure I'm not the only one said Mei making him sigh. Nope. Not happening said Sub-Zero making Mei and Haku pout now Mei Chan I need to leave since Anaki wants to see me so can I please get my pay? Asked Sub-Zero making Mei get a sly look on her face. Hmm. I'll only pay you if you show me your face said Mei with a smile. No that's not going to happen Mei Chan so please just pay me said Sub-Zero making Mei's eyes start to water. Sigh how about I tell you something only 7 people know offered Sub-Zero making Mei's eyes light up. Oh, and what would that be? Mei asked. Walking towards Mei Sub-Zero leaned over the desk and whispered in her ear my real name he whispered making Mei gasp in shock. Nodding her head Sub-Zero whispered it to her making her smile so I finally get to know my future husband's name this is great. Thought Mei as Sub-Zero stepped back now make sure you keep that a secret or forget about me ever working with you or Kiri again warned Sub-Zero making her nod. Don't worry Sub-Zero Kun I'll keep it a secret. Now as for you pay it will be transferred into your account within the next few days, said Mei getting a thankful nod from the mercenary. Thank you, Mei Chan send me a message if you require my services again. For now. I need to go see the old man and Kuro-chan will get pissed off if I'm late again said Sub-Zero getting a chill down his spine as he remembered last time he showed up late to a job for the old man. He didn't notice Mei and Haku's scowls at the mention of Kuro-chan. This Kuro-chan wouldn't happen to be Kuro too so Chi granddaughter of Anaki would it? Asked Mei annoyed that another woman had caught Sub-Zero's eye. Yeah, that's Kuro-chan she makes me call her that for some reason said an oblivious Sub-Zero making everyone sweat drop and think the same thing he can possibly be that dense can he? Cough anyway good luck on your travels and do make sure you stop by every now and then I do ever so love your company said Mei with a wink making a light blush appear on Sub-Zero's face not that anyone could see it. Of course Mei-chan now I really must get going so see you later Zabuza. Haku-chan having said his goodbye Sub-Zero disappears in a cyclone of snow and ice TCH show off muttered Zabuza before getting a chill go down his spine. Turning he sees Mei give him a sickly sweet smile now Zabuza Baka you're going to explain why you choose to run away instead of helping the rebellion said Mei her smile never wavering. Crap was all the man said before he jumped out of the window with Mei in pursuit spitting globs of lava at him. No use running Zabuza Baka I'm going to catch you and melt your balls off, shouted Mei. A moment's silence for that poor bastard. With Naruto appearing outside of Kiri Naruto bites his thumb drawing a small amount of blood and then goes through a quick sequence of hand signs before shouting Kushio no Jutsu creating a large plume of smoke. As the smoke cleared a western dragon the size of a two-story house with light blue scales and glowing yellow eyes appeared oh Sub-Zero why do you summon me? Asked the mighty beast. Sorry winner fang I need a lift to Iwa Pronto of Kuro-chan will kill me said Sub-Zero making the dragon chuckle haha your mate has you whipped already laughed winner fang. Oi I'm not whipped and she's not my mate you stupid reptile, exclaimed Sub-Zero. Whatever you say snowball just get on I have training with father soon. Climbing on the back of winter fang the duo took off into the sky and towards Iwa. Gates of Iwa. Sitting at the gate were Iwa's eternal gate guards Kuroda and Korzumi to Chunin that got suckered into being the gate guards. The two sat in their booth playing cards Haridem and Weep said Koizumi who was holding a full house. Koizumi were playing Rummy said Kuroda with a sweat drop. I knew that I was just testing you that's all exclaimed Koizumi with a grin making his friend face palm whatever let's play Aga wait do you hear that? 
asked Kuroda. No Paula hears the wind and a loud flapping sound answered Korzumi only to get hit in the back of the head by an angry Kuroda. That's what I was talking about, he yelled. Oh, my bad apologized Korzumi. Whatever let's just go see what it is with that the two left there both to see the cause of the strange sound. Looking up to the sky and seeing nothing the duo were about to return until Korzumi saw a small black dot in the sky that was headed towards them. Hey, Kuro what do you think that is? Asked Korzumi. My guess that's the cause of that noise. Get ready in case we have to fight the two pulled out a kunai each and hide it behind them. As the dot got closer the two went wide-eyed. In the distance was a western dragon flying towards them at incredible speed. Not sure what to do in this situation the two kept their guard up and waited for the dragon to get closer. As the beast got closer and closer they could see more details of the beast like its light blue scales and his yellow slitted eyes, but the most bizarre thing was what looked like a man riding in its back. Oi, you're seeing this to right? muttered Kuroda. Of course, I see it the thing is pretty hard to miss, exclaimed Korzumi. Not the dragon the guy riding on it, shouted Kuroda making Korzumi squint his eyes trying to get a better look until he saw him there's a guy on that thing. I just said that you moron, exclaimed Kuroda whilst punching Korzumi in the head. Or you two stop bickering, shouted a voice the two recognized. Turning to the voice they see Sub-Zero standing next to the dragon that was you Sub-Zero damn where'd you get the dragon? Asked Korzumi. Summoning contract, thanks. Winterfang you can go now said Sub-Zero. Whatever Snowball tell your mate to get you on a tighter leash joked Winterfang making the two guards laugh and pissing off Sub-Zero. Ha 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 I bet he's talking about Kurotsuchi, the two said together. Ha 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 told you, laughed the dragon before disappearing in a poof of smoke avoiding a spear of ice dch stupid reptile muttered Sub-Zero before walking towards the village leaving the gate guards to laugh at his expense. Ha ha so wanna bet that him and Kurotuchi to get together? Asked Korzumi getting a snort from Kuroda that's a sucker's bet. Tsuchikage office. Anaki the son daimate Tsuchikage Anaki is a very short, old man with a triangular beard and a mustache that has angular corners, a big red nose and thick eyebrows. The top of his head is completely bald, although, he has long white hair on the lower half of his head which is styled in a traditional chanmage haircut, the back of which is tied with a yellow ribbon into a top knot. Anaki wears a green and yellow coat with a red collar. Underneath he wears the traditional Iwagakura outfit consistent of a light green version of Iwagakura's flak jacket and mesh armor. He, however, has both his sleeves of his shirt but kept the single lapel on his right side. Along with this, he wears sandals. Currently, Anaki was rubbing his temple trying to soothe the building headache he was getting, the cause of his headache was his granddaughter Kurotsuchi. Kurotsuchi had short, black hair and pupilless pink eyes that are accentuated by her eyelashes running upwards at the corners. She wears the standard attire of the Iwa Nin consisting of a red uniform with her right sleeve missing and a lapel over her right leg, the brownie Wagakur flak jacket, fishnet tights and a skirt over them. She also wears regular shinobi sandals and a pair of gloves. I can't believe he's late, yelled a pissed off and frustrated Kurotsuchi as she stomped around her grandfather's office. Not knowing how to calm his granddaughter Anaki prayed for something to happen as if Kami heard his prayers a swirl of ice and snow appeared revealing Sub-Zero. Yo old man greeted Sub-Zero making a tick mark appear on Anaki's forehead but quickly went and was replaced by a sinister smile something that creeped Sub-Zero out. Naru-kun what did I tell you about being late Naruto went wide-eyed and pale as he heard that voice. Turning around he saw Kurotsuchi with her arm encased in rock with steam coming off of it meaning she combined it with her lava release. Hey. Kuro-chan sorry about being late but Zabuza wouldn't quite his mission so I had to stay and wait until he was finished and then Mei-chan wouldn't let me leave until she saw my face said Naruto who quickly covered his masked mouth realizing what he had just said. So you show this hussy Mei your face but not me, exclaimed an angry Kurotsuchi who tried to hit him with her rock slash lava covered arm stop moving so I can hit you, she yelled swinging her rock slash lava arm around. Stop Kuro-chan, I never showed her my face so please stop, begged Naruto who was hiding behind a nervous Anaki. Releasing her jutsu Kurotsuchi walks over to him and holds him by the collar of his shirt good, and for being late you have to take me out said Kurotsuchi with a sickly sweet smile making him rapidly nod good and make sure it's somewhere nice she said before releasing him and turning to look at her grandfather. Now that you two have done flirting it's time to talk business, Naruto I have a mission for you, but it's one not even you will take said Onaki with a serious look. I'm sure I can do the mission old man, so what is it another suicide's rank or am I saving a country again? No nothing like that. I want you to accompany me to Konoha for the Chunin exams, said Onaki making Kurotsuchi scream and protest no I refuse to let him go back there. Kurotuchi be reasonable you know I wouldn't ask this if it wasn't important said Onaki trying to reason with her nope not happening I won't let him, 
she said definingly making Anaki sigh knowing she was as stubborn as he was. I'll do it said Naruto after think it over shocking the two. Really question mark slash what? The two shouted in surprise getting a small chuckle from the Iceman. I'll do it he repeated. Excellent I'll begin preparations immediately said Anaki who began to think who else would accompany him to the exams. Hold up old man. Naruto are you sure you said you never wanted to return there? Asked Kurotachi making sure her friend and not-so-secret crush was sure with this. I'm sure Kuro-chan I hold not hate for Konoha I simply don't care about it or anyone there answered Naruto making her nod with a small smile happy that he had forgotten about his old home. Good now that's settled we have a one week before the exam start competing for Iwo will be team 6 consisting of Kurotuchi, Akatsuchi and Yukari our most powerful Jinnah team, I, Naruto and Han will be arriving after the month break between the second and third event with the other Kages. Sounds good. Now I need to go and find a hotel for a week see you two later said Naruto as he was about to walk out the office until Kurotsuchi shouted in protest you're not staying in some hotel you can stay with me I mean us, said a blushing Kurotsuchi hoping that he didn't catch her mistake. Luckily for her he didn't. Are you sure I don't want to impose, he asked making Anaki chuckle it's fine my boy we have plenty of room said Anaki hopefully with them under the same roof he will notice her feelings, thought Anaki mentally smiling at the thought of those two together. See Naruto-kun I told you. Now come I'll show you there so you can get settled and remember you owe me a dinner warned Kurotsuchi with a mock glare. Sure Kuro-chan it's a date said Naruto with an eye smile causing her cheeks to turn red from embarrassment getting a small chuckle from Anaki who noticed. Whatever now come on you have to go and unpack, she said as she walked off with a bit of extra sway in her hips. Following her not wanting to piss her of Anaki calls out to him Naruto just one more thing said Anaki. What's that old man? He asked. How does it feel to be whipped? Anaki said with a smirk pissing Naruto off why do people keep saying that I'm not whipped, exclaimed Naruto. Hurry up Naruto. The two heard Kurotsuchi yelled from down the hall coming. Naruto replied as he walked out the office trying to ignore Anaki making whipping sounds at him. Haha not even together and she has him wrapped around her finger. Ought to be young again Anaki muttered before getting back to his paperwork. Streets of Iwa. As the two walked towards Tsuchikage Manor Naruto couldn't help but notice all the looks they were getting um is this normal Kuro-chan? He asked, for me yes since I'm the granddaughter of a cage, and remember you're famous too especially here after your last spar with Han and Roshi said Kurotsuchi. Forgot about that. How are those two anyway? He asked, pretty good. After you meet them they started opening up more and the people of Iwo now hold them in high regard especially Han since everyone who mistreated him feels incredible bad said Kurotsuchi happy that those two were happy. That's good I'll have to go and see them whilst I'm here maybe have another spark exclaimed a happy Naruto making Kurotsuchi giggle at his excitement you can fight later we're here so go and unpack and be ready by 8pm ordered Kurotsuchi. Yes ma'am said Naruto with a salute before disappearing into the manor tch smart ass she muttered with a small grin. 8 p.m. Naruto was nervous very nervous he had never been on a date before and his first was was with Akish's granddaughter so if he fucked up he would know about it. Looking at himself in the mirror he had to admit he looked good he was wearing a dark blue suit with a matching waistcoat and tie with a white buttoned up shirt underneath along with black dress shoes and, of course, his ever-present face mask. Not bad but I bet she wants me to take the mask off, Naruto thought to himself. Waiting for what felt like eternity, have you ever waited for a woman to get ready it's like watching paint dry Naruto heard a familiar voice coming from the stairs well don't you clean up nice turning around Naruto's breath caught in his throat standing there was Kurotsuchi wearing a red dress with a slit on a right showing of her toned legs you know even with that annoying mask flies might fly in there if you keep your mouth open like that teased Kurotsuchi snapping Naruto out of his shock. Sorry Kuro-chan it's just that you look amazing. He said honestly making her blush so do you Naruto-kun even with that stupid mask said Kurotsuchi muttering the last bit. I like the mask it adds mystery, now come on I have reservations at the Red Lily for 8.30 so let's go said Naruto offering her his arm which she gladly took. Walking towards the restaurant in comfortable silence the two entered the restaurant ignoring the looks from everyone. Walking up to the maitre d who was a kind looking man with a well trimmed mustache. Table for two under sub-zero said Naruto getting the man to smile I yes we have been expecting you please follow me. Sir, madam said the man who lead them towards a private booth here we are please look over the menu and I will send a waitress to come and take your order when ready with that he walked off to tend to his other duties. Hmm, anything caught your eye? Asked Naruto making Kurotsuchi look at him oh one or two things she replied. After ordering their food, the two began to have some light conversation so Kuro-chan you finally happy to become a Chunin? Yeah, it's great, she exclaimed. The only reason I'm still Jinan is because the old man wanted to wait until the Chunin exam so that we can show he was power, said Kurotsuchi not really caring about her rank. I thought it was something like that since A is doing the same thing this year, said Naruto making her smile great that means there will be strong opponents said Kurotsuchi, 
Continuing their meal the two talked about what they had done since the last time they saw each other. Finishing their meal the two left the restaurant and headed back to Anaki's manor. After walking in comfortable silence, the two got back to the manor and went inside. Thanks for a wonderful night Naruto-kun said Kurotsuchi with a smile on her beautiful face. I'm glad you enjoyed it Kuro-chan. But I think it's time we call it a night said Naruto who was about to walk up the stairs until Kurotsuchi pulled his arm and turned him around confusing him on Kuro-chan what's the matter? Before he knew it she had pulled his mask down at the cheek and gave it a light kiss before pulling away thanks for dinner Naruto-kun said Kurotsuchi before walking up the stairs and into a room leaving a shocked Naruto behind. Getting out of his daze Naruto walked up the stairs and into his temporary room and slept knowing he would have to prepare before his newest mission. One week later, it had been a week since Naruto had returned to Iwa and accepted Anaki mission. Spending most of the week with Kurotsuchi Naruto quite sad since this was the day that she would leave for the Chunin exams with her team which was her, Akatsuchi and Yukari with their sensei being Roshi the Jinchuriki of the Four Tales or as he liked to be called Son Goku. Knowing that they wouldn't see each other for at least a week Naruto had to promise to help train her during the month break something he happily agreed with but warned her that he couldn't teach her any jutsu since her elements were his polar opposites his being wind and water and hers being fire and earth. Having already packed her stuff into storage scrolls Kurotsuchi and Naruto made their way towards the gate, when they arrived they noticed everyone there except Yukari. Walking closer Akatsuchi glares at Naruto something that he was used to. Oi Gramp, Sensei where is Yukari? Asked Kurotsuchi making Roshi sigh in annoyance Yukari has broken her arm after attempting a jutsu last night said Roshi annoyed since he had told her not to try the jutsu yet. So are we cancelling? She asked her pink eyes staring at her grandfather almost like a warning unless we find someone that is around your age and powerful then yes I won't needlessly risk the lives of Arjunan said Anaki making Kurotsuchi smirk I know someone, he's my age incredibly strong, very loyal not to mention hot. Oh, and who is this person? Asked Anaki with a smirk seeing where his granddaughter was going with this why Sub-Zero of course said Kurotsuchi like it was the most obvious thing in the world. What? Why me slash why him? shouted Sub-Zero and Akatsuchi in protest. Well he is strong, our age, knows our battle formations do I need to continue? said Kurotsuchi sending a glare at Akatsuchi who was about to argue pretending he didn't see the glare he protests he can tender the exams he's not a ninja of Iwa and even if he was he's stronger than a Janan he said through gritted teeth hating to admit Sub-Zero was stronger than him. Thinking over what they both said Anaki looks over to Sub-Zero who had stayed silent what do you think Gaki? I don't really care but if I don't go Kuro-chan won't get to compete but if I do I have to become a shinobi of Iwa and that's something I really don't want to do no offense. He said missing the glare he got from Akatsuchi when he said Kuro-chan. None taken, I know you like your wandering lifestyle, and you don't have to be a ninja of Iwa to compete for us we can just say we have an alliance with your clan which we do, and since this is a different mission you will be paid the equivalent of an S rank mission said Anaki getting a smile from Naruto, Kurotsuchi and Roshi and a scowl from Akatsuchi something they all noticed but didn't comment on. Agreeing with Anaki's idea Team 6 and Sub-Zero left towards Konoha. Hmm maybe I should have told them about the Team Kumo sent. Now it will be funny to watch and with that Anaki flew back to his office to make some preparations for later. Konoha one day later. As Team 6 ran towards Konoha Sub-Zero felt an energy he hadn't felt in years the Jinsei it's been years since I have been so close to it brings back memories thought Sub-Zero as he continued to run until an idea hit him I should take it with me if the fools in this village find it there is not telling what they would do to it as they ran Sub-Zero felt the same feeling he was having the entire trip. Turning his head slightly he saw Akatsuchi trying to glare a hole in his head I've never understood why that guy hates me so much he seemed cool with me until he wanted to spar and I kicked his ass mentally shrugging he ignores the glare and continues running suddenly a sense of nostalgia as he saw the large gates of Konoha. Lowering their speed to make sure they aren't seen as hostile team 6 are stopped by the gate guards halt state your business said the guard with hair covering one eye who Naruto recognized as Izumo. Stepping forward Roshi was instantly recognized as the two guards tense slightly my team and I are here for the tuning exams. Very well I'll just need to see your passes nodding to the guard all four pull out their passes all was well until he looked over Sub-Zero's pass you're no Iwa Shinobi why are you here demanded Izumo whilst his fellow guard made a discreet hand sign warning the hidden on Boo. He is from a clan allied with Iwa and since my team was a member short he was allowed to join by order of Tsuchikage sama said Roshi defusing the situation. Looking over the pass one more time Izumo hands it back and allows them into the village along with some directions to the Hokage Tower, sending another signal to the hidden Anbu to keep an eye on them. As Team 6 walked through the village they drew a bit of attention from the civilians since it was rare to see foreign ninja inside the village. Ignoring the looks they got the team walked towards the Hokage Tower. After a short walk, the team entered the Hokage Tower and waited outside the Hokage's office since he was in a meeting. After a couple of minutes, 
Some Jonin walked out Sub-Zero recognized them all from Asuma Sarutobi to Kurin Ayuhi even guy but the one that stood out the most was Kakashi Hitaka who saw him nice to see you again copycat greeted Sub-Zero with a nice smile something Kakashi returned making Kakashi's colleagues go wide I dear Kami there's two of them you two Sub-Zero. May I ask why you're here and with an Iwo team no less? He asked noticing that Sub-Zero didn't have a hit I ate on him. My clan are allied to Iwa and since this team was a member short I agreed to fill it he answered with another I smile aren't you a bit too strong to be a Janan? Asked Kakashi whose hope of his team winning the exams just dropped to minus numbers well I have no actual rank only the one in the bingo book but that's just to show how dangerous I am said Sub-Zero confusing Kakashi's colleagues um Sub-Zero was it? What do you mean bingo book you're just a Janan right? Asked Kurana slightly worried since her team was in the exam. Well in the bingo books I'm ranked as an A rank Ronin slash mercenary and since I'm not part of any hidden village I have no ninja he answered seeing no problem with telling them since it was common knowledge. All the Jonin apart from Kakashi went wide eyed in shock since he was the same age as their Janan and was already so strong if that's true then why are you here for the Chunin exams? Asked Asuma narrowing his eyes slightly. Sigh if you would have listened earlier then you would already know that answer. Said Sub-Zero making Asuma rub his head sheepishly he he sorry I was distracted admitted Asuma getting a raised eyebrow from Sub-Zero yes I saw, you were paying a lot of attention to Miss Yuhi's backside I think I even saw a bit of drool said Sub-Zero getting different reactions Asuma went pale. Kakashi let out a small perverted giggle, guy started shouting about youth and Kura and I turned red with anger and slapped the pale Jonin whilst Team 6 just stood there silently laughing to themselves. After composing themselves. Guy looked at Sub-Zero with fire in his eyes Yosh my youthful friend your youthfulness is burning bright if you are so strong yet so young, shouted Guy doing his patented good guy pose complete with sparkling teeth, however, Sub-Zero wasn't paying attention hi you say something Guy, asked Sub-Zero making Kakashi look at him with pride, Kuranai and Asuma sweat dropped are they long lost brothers? Guy, on the other hand, looked to the ground with his hair shadowing his eyes, Thinking he heard his feeling he was about to say sorry until Guy looked up with tears streaming down his face curse your hypnos Sub-Zero you and Kakashi will know the powers of youth. He exclaimed making them all sweat drop. After getting the okay from the secretary, Team 6 said their goodbyes to the Jonin and went inside the Hokage's office. Hokage office. As they walked into the office Sub-Zero was thankful he had his mask otherwise everyone would see a giant smirk on his face as he laid eyes on Minato Namikaze who looked awful his hair had lost its luster and started to turn grey. He had lots of frown marks and his eyes had massive bags under them. Looking over to he left he saw that Kurotsuchi was struggling with two things one was to launch a glob of lava at Minato and the other was to laugh her ass off at the sight of the mess of a man, even Roshi was trying to hide his smirk. Greets Hokage-sama, said Roshi with a bow which was copied by the rest of Team 6 Hello to you to Roshi-san I take it you and your team are here for the tuning exams said Minato with a smile inwardly jumping for joy with these exams we can capture foreign ninja without raising any suspicion but with Anaki's granddaughter here we can finally get the lava release bloodline he thought with a smirk. Yes this is team 6 consisting of Kurotsuchi, Akatsuchi, and Sub-Zero said Roshi making Minato go why I died as he looked at Sub-Zero so this is Sub-Zero who Kakashi spoke so highly of it's nice to meet you I must thank you for helping team 7 on their last mission said Minato with a smile but then his eyes turned serious but I had been informed that you were a mercenary not a ninja of Iwa I'm not a ninja of Iwa but my clan is allied with them so I agreed to fill in the missing space on my team as the original member was injured answered Sub-Zero making Minato mentally do backflips an entire clan with his abilities this is great all I need to do is capture him and get him to tell me where his clan is based. Ah I see that is fine then, now I hate to be a bad host but I have much work to do with these exams going on so please follow the Anbu member and she will show you where your hotel is with a snap of his fingers a female Anbu with a cat mask appeared and bowed to the Hokage. Following the Anbu out of the office, they didn't see me not to summon another Anbu this one wearing a mask with knee written on it. Streets of Konoha Following the Anbu across the rooftops Sub-Zero sees a familiar food stand and decides to go and visit Roshi I'm going exploring I'll see you all later getting a nod from Roshi and a worried look from Kurotsuchi Sub-Zero heads towards the ramen stand but before he gets there he hears shouting following the shouts he sees some very familiar people. Minutes earlier, Mito, Sayuri. And Kiba had just been told they were getting entered into the tuning exams and were heading to Ichirakus to celebrate when Kiba spots a weird box following them guys why is there a box following us? Just ignore it's just Konohamaru and his friends said Mito with a small smile but that quickly fades when the box explodes in smoke cough ko you used too much gunpowder as the smoke faded away three kids were revealed two boys and a girl. Whatever entrance time, I'm Konohamaru future Hokage, said the boy with goggles on his forehead. I'm Moegi the world's sassiest Kunoichi. 
yelled the girl with pigtails. I moved on I like maths the kid with glasses mumbled. And together we are the Konohamaru Corp. They all shouted together in a weird stance making Team 7 sweat drop. Getting out of their stance Konohamaru goes to Mito and starts jumping up and down in excitement Guess what boss I made a jutsu you wanna see it he exclaimed making all of team 7 curious Sure Kokun show us nodding rapidly Konohamaru goes through a couple of hand signs sexy jutsu he shouted before being covered in a plume of smoke when the smoke cleared standing there was a beautiful naked brunette hello there big boy said the brunette with a wink towards Kiba not a second later Kiba was blown back by a massive nosebleed with another plum of smoke the brunette turned back to Konohamaru who was laughing ha 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 did you see that feeling a chill down his spine he turns to see Mito and Sayuri with an evil aura surrounding them oh quickly running Konohamaru only got round the corner before he bumped into someone. Or oh, you breath that hurt, said a teen wearing a weird full body suit with ears on the top of his head but the strangest thing about him was his purple face paint hey sorry about that said Konohamaru who was about to run off again until the teen picked him up by the scruff of his shirt what kind of apology was that you dumb brat maybe I should beat some manners into you. Konkuro stop it we don't have time for this said a blonde teen with her hair in four consecutive ponytails and a massive folded fan on her back shut up Tamari this kid has it coming shouted Konkuro who was about to punch the poor kid until Mito and Sayuri arrived hey put Kokun down you bastard yelled Mito making Konkuro smirk and what are you going to do if I don't suddenly a swirl of sand appeared revealing a small red haired boy with a kanji for love tattooed on his forehead and had a large gourd on his back Konkuro stop it commanded the boy making Konkuro sweat oh okay guard dropping the boy who quickly ran behind Mito and Sayuri and stuck his tongue out at Konkuro. With Konohamaru safe Mito looks over the group and sees they all have Suna headbands I take it you are here for the Chunin exams. Present time, Gara looks over the two Konoi kiss mother once your blood confusing Mito and Sayuri who go I die the sand shoots out of his gourd and heads towards them not quick enough to dodge they shut their eyes preparing for the pain but out of nowhere a familiar voice was heard my my Gara Chan you haven't changed a bit have you Gara wet why died in fear as his sand started to rapidly freeze looking around in fear he spots Sub-Zero sitting on the ledge of a building why are you here stay away stay away mother is afraid screamed Gara holding his head in pain. That's not a very nice way to talk to a friend now as is Gara said Sub-Zero as he looks towards Konkuro and Tamari who had frozen in fear hello you two did you miss me? He asked breaking them out of their shock why are you here stuttered Tamari with fear in her eyes making Sub-Zero smirk I'm here for the tuning exams I'm in a team with Iwa so you better be careful he said making everyone there go wide-eyed. Why would you be in the tuning exams you're an A-rank Ronin? exclaimed a pale Konkuro afraid he might have to fight the ice user I owed Onaki a favor that and Kuro-chan asked me to join her team said Sub-Zero missing Mito and Sayuri's eyes narrow as he said Kuro-chan. And who is Kuro-chan? Asked Sayuri with slightly narrowed eyes Kuro-chan is Kurotsuchi Onaki's granddaughter answered Sub-Zero not noticing her and Mito's eyes narrow more. Anyway, Gara this is a warning behavior I'll do what I did last time warned Sub-Zero making Gara, Tamari and Konkuro to pale more nodding their heads the Suna team left to their hotel to warn Baki. Jumping down from the roof Sub-Zero looks to the ground and sees Konohamaru looking at him with starry eyes that was so cool mister. How's you freeze his sand? Can you teach me that? He asked rapidly. I can freeze sand due to my bloodline and sorry Gaki I can't teach you I only teach my clan members and future children said Sub-Zero getting a pout of disappointment from the boy making him chuckle. Patting the boy on the head Sub-Zero turns and starts to walk away but stops when he hears Mito shout hey you can just leave. Turning around he sees Mito and Sayuri jogging over to him making raise an eyebrow is there something you need? You're damn right there is you have to come with us data bio, exclaimed Mito but covered her mouth when she used her verbal dick making Sub-Zero and Sayuri sweat drop why do I need to go with you? He asked, this time. Sayuri spoke after we returned from our mission we told our Kachans about you and they want to meet you confusing Sub-Zero why do they want to meet me? He asked not really wanting to see his mother again. Don't know after we told them what happened they said they would like to meet you said Mito. Thinking it over for a second Sub-Zero agrees and follows them to the Uchiha compound. After walking for a bit. They arrive at the compound Sub-Zero notices it was nearly empty only a few children running around and some civilians walking around I didn't think the massacre would weaken them this much walking further they reached the clan heads home it was quite a large house with a traditional design. Walking inside Mito shouts Kachi and Anti Mikoto we're back and we have a guest a few seconds later a voice Sub-Zero recognized as Kushina Uzumaki was heard we're in here Mito-chan following the voice they find Kushina and Mikoto sitting in a room drinking some tea. As Sub-Zero looked at them he had to say he was impressed both of them were about 40 and they looked 25 Mikado was a fair-skinned woman with long, straight black hair with bangs hanging on either side of her face framing her cheeks and black eyes. She wore a Konoha Jonin uniform with a blue short sleeve shirt and trousers with a flak jacket open and a pair of black shinobi sandals. Looking at Kushina, 
He saw why she was known for her beauty she had fair skin and bright violet eyes her long red hair done into a ponytail with two long bangs framing her face with a blue Konoha headband holding her fringe back she was also wearing a short sleeved shirt and trousers only hers were black and over this she wore the Konoha flak jacket finishing her attire was a pair of blue shinobi sandals. Welcome back Mito chan Sayuri chan she then looks towards Sub-Zero who is your friends? She asked making everyone sweat drop at how forgetful she was Kushina I believe this is Sub-Zero the mercenary that helped our daughters at Wave said Mikado smiling at Sub-Zero. Hey, my bad she said sheepishly whilst rubbing the back of her head your daughters tell me you wanted to meet me why? He asked with narrowed eyes we wanted to thank you for helping our daughter said Mikado still smiling. That's not necessary I was doing it for my own gain now if that is all I shall be on my way said Sub-Zero who turned around and started to walk towards the door until he heard Kushina shout wait. I need to ask you some stuff sighing in annoyance Sub-Zero turns around and crosses his arms why should I answer your questions Uzumaki-san? Cause I said so Dada Bane, said Kushina who blushed slightly at using her hated verbal tick not good enough said Sub-Zero who turned and was about to walk out the door until a chakra chain wrapped around his chest you're answering my questions, said Kushina but was surprised when Sub-Zero smirked no no I'm not, and with that said he shattered into ice revealing he was an ice clone. All the observers went wide-eyed not knowing they were talking to a clone the entire time. Looks like he got away Kushina said Mikado who sweat dropped when she saw her friend run out the door shouting about finding the ice bastard her sweat drop grew as Mito chased after her mother shouting about teaching her a lesson. Mikado looked at her daughter to see she had an irritated look on her face we sure do pick our friends don't we Sayuri-chan. Yeah, sometimes I wonder who's more crazy than for all the stuff they do or us for being their friends said Sayuri making her mother giggle come on Sayuri-chan we should probably go save your boyfriend said Mikado making Sayuri blush he's not my boyfriend she shouted in denial gaining another giggle from Mikado oh fiance you sure do move fast Sayuri-chan said Mikado before running ahead making Sayuri's face match the Uzumaki's hair Kachan shouted Sayuri as she ran after her mother. Streets of Konoha As Sub-Zero walked back to his hotel the familiar ramen stand caught his eye, feeling hungry he walks over and sits on a stool waiting a minute an old man comes out welcome to Ijiraku's ramen, what would you like? Asked the man with a smile, thinking it over for a second I'll have four a bowls of miso ramen said Sub-Zero who laughed as the old man had Rio signs in his eyes haha another ramen lover, I'll get right on it said the old man who walked over to the kitchen and started to cook the order. Whilst the old man was cooking a voice came out from the back of the stand to san I'm back shouted a voice as the door to the back opened a cute brunette woman was standing there great timing Ayame could you give this to the man over there said the old man passing her a large bowl of ramen. Bringing the bowl over Ayame sees Sub-Zero's mask and wondered what he looked like without it here you go sir she said with a smile. Thank you Itadakimasu said Sub-Zero who noticed the woman was staring at him as if waiting for something. Not seeing the problem with letting the girl look he pulled down his mask and started to eat oh my kemi. Ayame mentally screamed as she stared at Sub-Zero's handsome face with hearts in her eyes even her father had a blush on his face. Finishing his meal Sub-Zero pulled up his mask much to Ayame's disappointment and left heading back to his hotel to rest for the exams tomorrow. Finishing his meal Sub-Zero pulled up his mask much to Ayame's disappointment he left heading to his hotel to rest for the exams tomorrow. After arriving Naruto found Kurotsuchi asleep on the sofa she must have waited for me picking her up in a princess style she snuggles into his chest getting him to lightly chuckle. Bringing her to his room he lays her on the bed and tucks her in and kisses her forehead night Kuro-chan whispered Sub-Zero before he left the room and went into his own and slept hoping something exciting happens tomorrow. Next day, after waking up, showering and changing Naruto was greeted by an angry Kurotsuchi standing in his room where were you? She demanded with anger and worry in her eyes I ran into some old friends and had a nice chat then I got dragged to the Uchiha compound to talk to Mikado and Kushina he answered making her go red with anger you actually talked to that bitch. Why? She shouted not liking that Naruto would talk to those bastards. I told you back in Iwa I don't hate anyone in Konoha apart from maybe Minato, and I wouldn't say talked more like they thanked me and then I left said Naruto leaving out Kushina tying him in chakra chains I still don't like them said Kurotsuchi with a scowl making him sigh I know but let's just forget about them okay. Yeah okay but if they try anything I'm going to melt them, she said with a smirk. Leaving his room Kurotsuchi find. Akatsuchi and Roshi eating breakfast joining them the four eat their food quickly and team six toward the academy whilst Roshi goes towards the Jonin lounge. When they got to the academy they find their way to a large room filled with Janan from all over the element nations ignoring them all team six head towards the stairs and see a girl with buns in her hair and a mini guy arguing with two ninjas standing by the stairs. 
not in any rush they watch, please let us go up begged the girl but her pleas fell on deaf ears as one of the ninjas went to punch her only for the mini guy to catch it easily that was very unyouthful of you said mini guy only to be hit on the back of his head by the girl with buns and her hair Lee you idiot it was your idea to hide our strength. Sorry Ten Ten mumbled the now named Lee it's okay Lee, at least, you tried to help unlike Neji said Ten Ten making Lee smile. Looking around. They see their third teammate Neji walking towards them and where have you been demanded Ten Ten crossing her arms and tapping her foot on the ground I was scouting out our competition he answered making Lee grin what a fantastic idea my youthful teammate your flames of youth are burning brightly exclaimed Lee making Ten Ten sweat drop before looking at her other teammate did you find anyone worth worrying about? She asked it doesn't matter we are fated to win said Neji with an aura of arrogance around him. Shaking her head at her arrogant teammate Ten Ten takes another look around the room and spots a team of Iwan in. But one stood out the most he had snow white hair with icy blue highlights he wore a pair of black steel toed combat boots with black combat trousers with an ice blue belt with the Lin Kuei symbol on it, for his upper body he wore a tight sleeveless black shirt showing off his defined muscle, over this an ice blue short sleeved trench coat and to finish of his outfit he wore a blue face mask. As Ten Ten stared at the teen she felt a chill go down her spine looking to the left of the white haired teen she saw another teen with black hair and pink eyes glaring at her. Not caring about the glare Ten Ten and her teammates walk over there hi I'm Ten Ten and these are my teammates Neji and Lee greeted Ten Ten with a smile. Hello Ten Ten I'm Sub-Zero and these are my temporary teammates Kurotsuchi and Akatsuchi said Sub-Zero confusing team Ten temporary? Why are you leave? Asked Ten Ten I'm not an Iwan and my clan is allied with Iwan this team needed a replacement so Anaki called me and said Sub-Zero with a nice smile now I don't want to look antisocial but I think we should get to the exam area he said as he and his team walked away. He seemed nice said Ten Ten getting a nod of agreement from Lee yes he seems very youthful. It doesn't matter he is fated to lose said Neji annoying his teammates. Third floor. What was that? Exclaimed Kurotsuchi as they walked to the end of the corridor what was what? Asked the confused Sub-Zero. You talking to that girl said Kurotsuchi with jealousy in her eyes I was just being polite Kuro-chan nothing more. Good keep it that way ordered Kurotsuchi with narrowed eyes. Reaching the end of the corridor team 6 opened the door and are immediately greeted by a wave of weak KI hmm I'll show you really killing intent said Sub-Zero unleashing a quarter of his KI making some of the weaker Janan pass out and the others pale hmm weaklings. Still as cool as every ice coon. Said a voice turning around Naruto pale standing there was a fair skinned teen she has blue eyes and straight, blonde hair framing her face cut in an asymmetrical bob style with the front bangs reaching her shoulders. She wears a very low cut outfit which displays her sizable cleavage, with mesh armor underneath, a short skirt and red hand guards, high boots with a white girdle. Gulp H hey Samui chan, you have some explaining to do ice kun. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.